Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, I'll call into open session the meeting of the AISD Board of Trustees at 7.03 p.m. on May 15th, 2014. I want to thank everyone for coming out this evening, especially these tall students right in front of me. <laughs> I'll wave to the crowd so they can see us on there. Uh, we will start our meeting with the opening ceremony. Please join um, our trustee in his last meeting, Mr. Tony Pompin, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, please be seated. At this time, would you please silence all cell phones, electronic devices to avoid disruptions around you. And now if you would, please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. The first item on our agenda tonight if you can't tell, they know what they're doing, they've done this before, is our student performance for tonight. Up first we have our student performance by the Martin High School Choir. <coughs> my sons as they start sc scooching out they don't get to hear all the positive words but let me talk a couple of words about your amazing choir um, in Martin High School so this group they have performed before and it's just truly amazing so let me talk a second the Martin Chamber Singers is a vocal ensemble comprised of the top students in the Martin Cho choral program 
The program has a total of 391 students involved in 10 performing orga organizations. Among the 37 members of the chamber, the students are involved in theater, band, orchestra, athletics, student council, and many different clubs on campus. 75% of the students in chamber take advanced placement courses. Martin High School just recently took seven choirs to UIL contests and received seven sweepstakes. A first that all choirs received all one ratings from every judge. But if you ask this group, one of the most enjoyable moments this year was singing at the Ranger game last week. And let me tell you something, Ms. Owens, you may not have heard this. When they were walking off on that choir, there's a guy who sits there and he has season tickets every game. And he stopped a couple of years. He goes, I listen to these every single day. That's one of the best ones I've ever heard in my whole life. And that's where it goes. He didn't need to say that. He didn't have to say that. And he doesn't say that to every group. Trust me, he's kind of an old man that will get mad. So <laughs> for him to say that, it was a very, very, very high-spoken high statement. I can't thank you for everything you do for the choir and those students that are in here today. Thank and Ms. Thank you. I know Mr. Hibbs has one thing. Yeah, he'd I do. Like to and, uh, Ms. Owens, Ms. Betsy, yeah, and Betsy Clark here. Yeah, you guys have done a tremendous job with them, and and you can tell they it, just by the quality of performance. Uh, you do have one member, uh, Karen Chapa, and Karen Chapa. I just want to make sure that we recognize her. Is she still around here? Uh oh. Okay. Well, paging. Oh, there she paging is. Paging Karen here. Chapa. Okay. Karen, just raise your hand back there, real quick. I want to let you know something special about Karen Chapa. Four years, all state choir. First time in the history of the AISD. Wow. There's a good reason why Arlington was voted one of the. Uh, uh, best cities for music education and it's because of these teachers and the quality of students that we have again thank you guys thank you this room's not known for its acoustics and they they even make this room they make this room sound good so not that everything we say isn't good coming out so <laughs> let's move on to the next item <laughs> we'll move on to item B uh, Community Engage for Excellence Award of Appreciation. Tonight, we have a great community group to award. Tonight, we have the distinct honor to give our Community Engage for Excellence Award to the Arlington Women's Club. Ms. Duke, I know you're accepting award. Please come up here so I can brag on y'all for a couple of minutes. And let me just preface this by saying this is a group my mother just joined not too long ago, and she was a little hesitant joining this group. I have to admit, she was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this group. And, <laughs> and now she goes and she's like, I love going to every single meeting. They're so fun. So I have to say thank you for taking in my mother on the same note on that. <laughs> she calls you all now instead of me every day. So <laughs> you do. She used to work for you, Ms. Duke. So let me just talk. The Arlington Women's Club provides support for students pursuing additional education in either a college or a trade school. This past school year, the Arlington Women's Club has provided a $2,500 scholarship to a student in each of the AISD high schools. In supporting the scholarship, every Arlington Women's Club member contributes to a philanthropy project that funds 25% of the scholarships. Over the past 10 years, the Arlington Women's Club has provided over $148,000 in scholarships to AISD students. Now you know why we're recognizing the Arlington Women's Club. This is an organization that's been doing this a long time in Arlington, has a major presence in Arlington, um, carries a lot of history in Arlington, um, not just from what the club's done, but the people who are in the club and how you've seen Arlington grow and change for the good and for the bad on the same side. And it's about time we're recognizing the Arlington Women's Club and for everything you do for the ASD and our students here. And so to accept the award, we have Miss Judy Duke, a uh, former AISD principal in our district and also the first vice president to accept the awards. Ms. Duke, would you like to say a few words on the women's club? Ms. Duke, you know the rules. Go to the microphone. <laughs> 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 to thank the board very much for this um, award recognition. We really value education and many of our members are former teachers and uh, this evening I have some members of the scholarship committee here with me and I'd like to introduce them and also some officers if you don't mind. Please. 
Um, I have Beth Anderson, who's a member of the scholarship committee. Many of you know her for another reason. <laughs> she is the namesake of um, Anderson Elementary. And I might add, we have one other namesake in our organization, and that's Margie Bryant of Bryant Elementary. And then Carolyn Jolly, if you all will stand, please. <laughs> 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 Carolyn is our third vice president and beside uh, Carolyn, uh, Lucia Blumberg who's a member of the scholarship committee and then Lynn Binion who is chair of the scholarship committee this year and beside her <laughs> is Laura Lace who is uh, the secretary of our organization and then we have Dorothy Rencrell who's also a member of the scholarship committee. The ladies on the scholarship committee put in many long hours as do the officers of our club. Again, we thank you very much. We are very committed to education and very proud of the students that go through Arlington Independent School District and want to help them further their education. We thank you for your duty too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Duke. And ladies, I'd ask you, please don't be seated. Come out to the front. Dr. Vassos and I'd love to come down and give you an award. Ms. Anderson, yes, come on. We're, We're Get a picture, slide in. <laughs> Once again, thank you to the Women's Club and everything you do. There's so many organizations in this town. It's a, it's a distinct honor to win that award. So thank you. Thank you for letting, allowing us to recognize you tonight. Now, not many a times trustees, well, maybe I do, but we're not, we don't usually talk about ourselves or what each one of us does. And we usually hold it to one time to do that, when a trustee's in his last meeting. And tonight, unfortunately, it is Mr. Tony Pompa's last meeting. Um, and, and let me just start, and I won't go into it full, I'll let one of my other colleagues go first. But let me just start and say, there's so many hours, so much work that's put in, and we don't recognize each other sometimes enough. And it, it's really nice for us to be able to have this time and recognize and spend these few moments. So if you would, please bear with us as we give our nice words to Mr. Pompa for the great job you've done. So at that time, I'd open up to any of my colleagues. Not everybody at once, or 
Tschüss. John's going, John's going last. John's going last. Dr. Reich? <laughs> okay, I, I, guess I'm, I guess I'm first up. I have to figure out something nice to say real quick here. That's going to be a real easy thing. Tony, uh, it's been uh, three incredibly lightning fast years with your service here on the board. Um, your contributions to this board I consider invaluable. Uh, your level of uh, vision and entrepreneurial spirit and background that uh, you bring as a skill set, that you brought as a skill set uh, to this group, uh, really helped embolden our team in, in moving things forward. Um, the amount of time that we all put into this is easier when we each bring something. And for what you brought, you made the time over these three years, in my opinion, much more enjoyable and uh, endurable. Um, we've, we've come through so many things in, in the three years that you've been on this board. Um, from the strategic plan and all of the elements that went into that uh, before, uh, during, as we are now and, and moving into the future, uh, really helping focus on being data-driven and metric-driven at all times. Uh, I personally uh, find a great pleasure in, in that, and I'm, I'm going to miss having a, a colleague that, that has that, that similar ideal so much. Um, you're a, a wonderful individual, a very uh, likable guy, and we have had a great uh, professional relationship up here in the dais. Uh, away from here, uh, we've had a, a great uh, relationship uh, together, and I, I am hopeful that that just continues on in, into the future. You might be leaving this boardroom, but uh, you won't be leaving I don't think any of our hearts, and I, I, uh, it is a bittersweet moment uh, when you announced that you were going to pursue other endeavors, uh, and that decision had to be made. As far as finality here, uh, that that was a that was a hard hard pill for me to swallow personally, and uh, I guess I'll put that out there as a pharmacy pun, being a pharmacist. Uh, so. Thank you very much. Um, to the girls out there, thank you for sharing your dad with us. Uh, I know that he has probably been away from you a lot more than you probably would like. And for the biggest girl out there, I say that to you as well. <laughs> You're getting your hubby back. Um, thank you for sharing him with us and all his skill and expertise and, and time. And we all know that it's the families behind us that give us the opportunity and the ability to do what we're doing. And I know that that has not been easy. I know there's been ups and downs. And uh, in order to have those sacrifices for us, essentially to experience nothing but ups uh, as a board, as a team of eight, I, I thank you personally uh, to you guys. And now you've got your dad back to do some other things. Uh, so uh, that, that's, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you so much, Tony. We are going to miss you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Reich. Mr. Barron. Thank you, President Hart. No, I won't do that to you. <laughs> uh, I think Tony has brought to us the business acumen that we really needed and brought us down to earth as far as things that we thought that, that companies could do or that we could do to, to make us be more business oriented. And I, for one, really appreciated that part of you. Uh, I especially frame my context of Tony Pompa in two stories. One was when you told us about loading your lovely wife, Julie, and five girls in a camper and went to the West Coast. And I thought, any man that can do that with all those women <laughs> deserves to be on the school board. <laughs> he can do anything and live through it. 
And the other story was when you sat here that night and told us your life story, my goodness, what a man. I'm proud to know you. Wish you all the best. Thank you, Mr. Pompa, or Mr. Barron. <laughs> well, thank you also, Mr. Pompa. Just paying him a solence. Mr. Pompa, um, when I, you meet people that are fire starters, you know it right away. And when I uh, met you and we uh, first started working on what the district might be, um, we, we had a lot of long uh, conversations over a lot of um, uh, in-depth discussions on what the district might be. And something that always will be your signature to me is that Tony Pompa never settles for better. He insists on best, on the best. But it's not, it's not for you, Tony, it's so that others may succeed and, and achieve great heights. And I appreciate what you do for others. And also the sense of teammanship. Um, I think you know, I talk often about the importance of teamsmanship because for us to lead, we lead as a team. So as a little demonstration this evening, I have recruited a team to help me thank you. Girls. <laughs> Come on up. Come on up, right up here. <laughs> Tony's real nervous now. <laughs> Tony, I asked the girls to come in this evening and um, share uh, their thoughts too, so that everyone can hear it. A world, meet the Pompa girls. I can see myself. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of yeah. Did you have something to say to your dad? Um, right through here. Okay. Well, I'm glad that him, he was elected because he worked very, very, very hard on trying to. And it was kind of was boring, but, <laughs> but I'm glad he got elected. And for the past three years, he has done a great job and everything he has been working so hard on. And I'm glad that Keisha Mays has won to take my dad's spot. <laughs> Um, I thought it was cool that my dad got elected for school board. Um, I remember when I was turning eight and his election party was on my birthday and he won. <laughs> so it was a pretty cool birthday. Um, and I also remember one day he woke me up and he told me he had canceled school because it was so cool. <laughs> the power of a trustee, Mr. Pompa. I just wanted to say my dad is so hardworking. He's the best dad ever, and I love him so much. say that my dad I was so happy that my dad won because he's worked so hard on w what he has done in the past few years and I'm so happy and I love him that's very nice very nice <laughs> okay so uh <laughs> I don't know if I can top all those, you know, speeches, but I'll try. Um, I remember, you know, my dad telling us that he was going to run for school board trustee, and I thought it was really cool, and, you know, I'm also glad that he got elected, and I think he's done a really good job for, you know, our school and our um, school district, and I'm just really proud of my dad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, girls. Thank you, Pompa girls. You know, Miss Pena, I don't want to follow. I know. Four they say not girls, children. So. Not children and. Yeah, boy, that is. 
We should have made Jamie go last with that one right there. Ms. Pomp, Ms. Pena, go ahead. Yes. Well, I just I want to thank you, Tony, for all you've done. You know, um, I usually sit back and listen to what all you have to say, and then I give you my final version of what I just heard everybody say. Sure, sure, sure. Um, one of the things I really have admired about you, because um, in my life, my husband is my number one priority and most important to me. And Julie, not a meeting goes by that he doesn't mention your name. So, I mean, just a few minutes ago in that room, he talked about Julie. So you, you and I have that very much in common. You have a focus that was very much needed. I mean, I've been here on this board for a long time and, and I've watched it evolve. And I can tell you, this is the board I always wanted to be on. So I'm, I'm sorry to see you go, really. But I do want you to know, and everybody, I've said this before, uh, a couple of years ago when my house got hit by the tornado, there came Tony Pompa. Him, him and John Hibbs were the two hardest working people I ever saw. John gets in a truck with uh, Peter and they take off to Home Depot and buy uh, plywood and all the materials needed to seal all my windows up to get my house secure. John and Tony proceed to put all the plywood up on my windows. I mean, they were my heroes because I was sitting there dumbfounded, really too shook up to know what to do, walking around like a zombie, and you guys came to my rescue, and I remember that because there you were pushing that plywood, trying to get it through that window, and I thought, oh, I'm so glad he's a lot younger than I am. <laughs> but I really have appreciated that, that and, and um, once I become a friend, I'm always a friend. You have to do something pretty bad to make me not your friend anymore. So I want you to know um, I'm very loyal and I hope that you don't go too far and you know you can pick up the phone and tell every one of us what you think we're doing <laughs> 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 and ask your questions and I'm sure um, you know one of the great things though that having served a full term on the school board you have the right now to give each one of your children their diploma so exercise that right and uh, that's because it's quite an honor to do that. I appreciate you, Tony, and I'm, I'm so glad you're here, and I know you're going to make an impact on our community, too. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pena. Dr. Grossos. Thank you, President Hogg. Tony, uh, you're driven and you're focused, and you've, you've been that way since we first met. Um, I think you have added so much value to our district, uh, and that value translates to the students, to the 65,000 plus students that we serve. You should be very proud of your service. Uh, you've challenged me and staff, uh, the board, and the community. And uh, we're, we're much better for it, Tony. Um, you know, you're, you're very goal-oriented, and that's very obvious uh, with your business and, and, and the things you've accomplished. But I think that it's also important that you have a very big heart and so you you have that unique balance of mind and heart Tony and I've been fortunate as a superintendent to see both and and it's so impactful uh, you've you've added so much value to my life and, and the life of so many students um, I think some of the most enjoyable times were when we were able to sit down and just talk one-on-one uh, -on -one and and uh, really sharpen each other's craft and, and understanding of, of what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, to the family, the Pampa family, uh, thank you for sharing your dad and your husband with, with us. Uh, again, the value that he's added is tremendous and you should be very proud of that. And so Tony, I'm going to miss you as a, a trustee, uh, but you're a friend. So we will certainly be in touch. I know where to find you. So, <laughs> thank you, Tony. Thank you, Dr. Cross. Besides four girls in school, Dr. Cross, he's not going anywhere really. So, <laughs> we're gonna, we'll let Mr. Hibbs go last because he he kind of recruited this crazy guy in here. So, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bombo, let me talk. You know, this is I tell people, and I remember first time talking to you. This is one of the hardest jobs you'll ever do as a trustee. You know, you don't get paid. You usually only hear from people when they're upset. 
and you're dealing with the most precious commodities in this city. It really is. But I also would tell you, and from our first, one of our first discussions, it's the most rewarding job you could ever do. And I remember the first time we met, and someone started saying, this Tony Pompa, he should run. I said, who's Tony Pompa? Let's have a call, talk. And we had lunch one day, and we started talking. And you always look at, say, who's joining our team? Because I don't think there's anything more important than trustees of who's joining our team. Mm -hmm. And we knew we were right on that cusp of having the team we needed. We knew we were right on the cusp, but we needed that special element. And when you look at trustees, you look, why is someone running? What are they running for? First I heard you have five girls, and I said, whoa, wow. How can any man make it through anything with five girls? <laughs> and then we started hearing, I started talking to you, and I saw how passionate you were. I saw how much you cared for your family. I saw how much you cared and how important education was in your lifetime. Not even knowing your whole story, but I knew you could see it through coming through. And then I started talking to you through business and those discussions. We started talking about self-help development books that we both love to read. And I started realizing, I said, this is our missing piece. This is what we need. And then we looked on, you got elected, you won, it was a great campaign, you did a great job. I remember you talking through many a nights of the political process, which baffles all of us sometimes in this world. And then we saw those first six months that I think every trustee goes through, the frustration of how hard it is sometimes to get things truly done with all the rules that we're bound by in this district and through the state. And then we started the full discussion and we knew as a board we had that missing piece to create what I think is the most important thing we've done in this district, a strategic plan. And you were the piece. You were the driver. You were the piece that helped us get to that stage of where it is and helped us get to the point of a district of being proactive versus reactive. And really taking some of those pie in the sky dreams that we all talked about of how do we improve, how do we make this district, and you did it. And you helped us push through. You helped us stay organized. You helped us focus. I remember, as Dr. Rice said, it was very difficult when you told me you were running for the state senate. I was very excited for you, but I was also a little sad for our board. Because I knew because it was the same year you were up for a trustee, you couldn't run for both positions. And you had to choose one or the other. But I knew you were running for the right position reasons. You weren't running for anything just for yourself. You are running for the state of Texas, and more importantly, for the AISD, and more importantly, to give your children and the other children in this area the benefits you've gotten through this life. And make sure they had those. And I can't thank you enough. And it takes a lot. And that was a big step. And I know how hard it was, because you knew you weren't going to be on this board anymore. Because I know how much you enjoy this board. And it was very hard for us, and we all talked. And we said, we don't really want to lose Tony. And there was talk about how do we talk him out of it to keep him on this board. But we knew it was the right step for you to run for that. And I thank you for putting yourself out there, because it's very difficult to do. You did it three years ago, and you did it again in the Senate race. And it's a very difficult things to do. Now let me talk also, and Mr. Barron brought it up. When you had that speech in here that night of the DREAM Act, my mother already loved you before that. But when she heard that story that night, I think I dropped down a rung and you passed me <laughs> on that one, Mr. Pompa. And it was well deserved and I agree with her 100%. Your story, and it was about the DREAM Act, is the true American dream. And I am one humbled by your story and blown away and mesmerized and, and tell the story to almost everyone I know Every time we go to lunch with someone, you're so humble you don't bring it up. And I said, let me tell you about Tony Pompa and what Tony Pompa's done. It's amazing. And I'm very, very proud to call you a friend and was so happy to serve the last three years with you on this board. It's truly the greatest thing. And to Julie, wait, let me talk to the five Pompa girls. And I know Kayla's watching online. I said I'm never going to get all these five Pompa girls' names correct. They're all running around. But what a pleasure it is to see each one of you, see how much you love your dad and mom, and see how much you love school, see how much you love the city. And you're the reason, and it's enjoyable to see you around, because this is why we do everything we do. 
you're not only daughters of one of our colleagues, you're five girls that were in this school district that are critical. And it's great to see y'all's story and how wonderful y'all are. And thank you for being such nice young women. To Julie, let me just say, it started off, I said, who's Julie Pompa? My wife was like, I like Julie Pompa. I said, I do too. I go, I don't know much about Julie Pompa yet. And you've become one of our great friends. We, my wife, when I told Tony was running for board, she goes, I can't hang out with Julie anymore. I said, yes, you can, just not, we're not gonna be at board functions together. So it, Julie, the way you've supported Tony and the way you keep this family rolling while also helping run the business, it's amazing. I, I don't know how you're doing. You're truly superwoman. You, you're an amazing, amazing woman. Um, one of the best parts of this board is your friendship. Um, I, I can't thank you enough for that, for everything it is. And Tony, the final thing, as someone who's about to be the father of the first little girl watching you, you serve as a role model. And I can't thank you enough for that. Watching how you love your little girls, how you treat them, and how you do it across the district, I, I, I will take that and never forget that. And I thank you for everything you've done for this district. Thank you. Thank you, Bully. Tony, I know that I've always been a mentor to you. <laughs> <laughs> you followed me into my neighborhood. Um, my kids are older than yours. You saw how good my kids turned out. Your kids are turning out pretty good, too. Um, I pop popcorn and was a popcorn man for seven years at Miller. You were a popcorn man there for three years. I ran for school board and won. I talked you into it, you ran for school board and won. I'm probably more your idol, aren't I? <laughs> um, in all seriousness, um, the Pompas are my family. They know that, uh, every, every one of their kids know that um, I love them with all my heart. I've been able to see them all uh, grow up. Uh, we've seen bumps, bruises, dog bites, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> And, uh, but uh, they, uh, they know as well as I know, our doors are always open to one another. Um, Tony, when you came onto this board, you changed it. We had a radical change in the time that you've been on this board. We've taken a board not saying that any, anything taken away from any other board at a different time, but we were at a point in this district. We had dollars being cut from the state. Uh, we needed to talk about truly being, uh, doing things different. And when other districts were struggling to find monies, uh, it was your sound business practices that helped us um, find ways to be able to um, work to make cuts without them cutting into families within our district. Um, you drove this board to a strategic plan. You saw how strategic thinking uh, has helped develop and drive your business and you use those sound business practices. Uh, when people um, in the community, they see bonds happening, things like this, oh, they're, they're spending monies. What they don't see is you bringing ideas that ca recaptured $13 million here, $12 million here. We, we, we made hard cuts in programs over here. You were willing to do the things that needed to be done, but you never lost compassion for the kids, the faculty, and the staff of this district. You truly are a volunteer servant. This is a crazy post that we all serve in. It really is a crazy post because we run to, get, uh, to be elected to volunteer. The only thing we get is a, a meal before we come, come out here for a board meeting. They're great, but that's <laughs> the only thing that we get. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize. They say there must be some alternative reason. All right, they want their name on a building. Well, we don't get our names on buildings. We, you want, they want to, uh, to 
find somewhere and somebody's going to do something nice for them. We're school board trustees. I mean, people don't pay us any attention. But what you've done is your heart and your compassion has always been driven by your love for your beautiful wife, for your kids. And then when you saw your family grow by 64,000 other students, you had that same compassion, that same love, that same drive, and those 8,000 employees. I wish the employees could hear some of the conversations when we were having to make tough decisions and cuts and things and hear where we've got to save positions and do it in a manner that it, it, that it makes sense. Do it in a manner that we can um, truly be responsible to our community that we serve. And the word trustee it just wraps it up. People have their trust. They put their trust in you and you serve them well. There's a Christian song that was written a few years ago and it says, um, I want to thank you for giving to the Lord because my life was changed. That's truly going to be the situation. Today, Tony, we can give you a couple of accolades, but truly your reward's gonna be in heaven because I, I have no doubt there's gonna be a line of people that are gonna come up to you and say, because of the things you did, I'm where I'm at today. And I appreciate that compassion. I think I appreciate your dedication uh, to this board. I think I thank you for your dedication to your family. And I, I really marvel at your dedication to the Lord. Uh, we're going to miss you up here. We're all going to have the, the ability to have you here in Arlington. So we appreciate you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Ebbs. And Ms. Prompt, before you say anything, we've got a couple of couple of other things for you. So at this time, I'd like to call up our state representative, uh, Ms. Diane Patrick, for a few words and a nice, distinct honor. Thank you, President Hogg. Friends, it's so wonderful to be able to join you this evening in honoring my good friend, Tony Pomp, and I'd like to ask you, Tony, if you would come down and join me at the podium. <laughs> I have some presentations for you. And while you're on your way down, I do want to say to all the board members, congratulations on the bond election. Thank you. I, what I am so proud of this board is because you exerted leadership in this community and brought our community together. And that is not an easy task. So thanks to each and every one of you for the fine work that you did on that. Very proud. Well, Tony, this evening I have a couple of things for you in honor, recognition of your contributions to this board and our school district. I'll start with, we have a flag flown over the Texas Capitol in your honor and the, pla the flag etiquette in case you need to review that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's my distinct honor to present to you a resolution from the Texas House of Representatives. Whereas Tony Pompa is concluding his tenure on the board of the Arlington Independent School District in May 2014, and this occasion provides a fitting opportunity to recognize Mr. Pompa for his notable contributions to the AISD. And Whereas, born in Mexico, Tony Pompa came to the United States when he was 11 years old. He graduated from St. Edwards University in Austin in 1994 and became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 2008. And whereas Mr. Pompa was elected to the AISD Board of Trustees in 2011, during his term, he served on the Capital Needs Steering Committee, which prepared a $663 million bond proposal that I had just mentioned was so successful. It's the largest in Tarrant County history. 
approved by voters on May 10th, 2014, the bond issue will make possible updates to nearly every campus and the construction of two new elementary schools, as well as the construction of a district-wide career and technical center, fine arts center, agricultural science facility, and athletic complex. Mr. Pompa has also served on the Financial Futures Committee, which reviews the district's budget and makes recommendations to the Board of Trustees. In addition, he has participated in the adoption of a strategic plan for the district and in the hiring of a new superintendent. And he has helped oversee the establishment of an early college high school where at-risk students can earn their high school diploma and up to 60 college credit hours tuition free. And whereas this public spirited Texan has also served on the Arlington Futures 2025 committee, which has assisted in the far reaching endeavor to develop a comprehensive city plan, the founder and chief executive of General Assembly, a provider of services to retailers and manufacturers since 1993, Mr. Pompa has additionally played an active role in the local business community, serving as a director in the Arlington Chamber of Commerce, the Arlington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and the Dallas chapter of the Entrepreneurs Organization. Moreover, he has given generously of his time and talents as a mentor for the Texas Christian University Youth Entrepreneur Program. And whereas, in all his endeavors, Mr. Pompa has enjoyed the love and support of his wife, Julie, and their five children. And whereas Tony Pompa has demonstrated a steadfast commitment to making his community an even better place in which to live and work. And in so doing, he has earned the deepest respect and appreciation of his fellow citizens. Now, therefore, let it be resolved that Tony Pompa be honored for his outstanding service on the Arlington Independent School District Board of Trustees and that he be extended sincere best wishes for continued service. Thank you, And Mr. Pompa, stay down there. Dr. Cavazos and I'd like to present you a couple other things. Really blown away some of your schedule. Tony, on behalf of the board, we always constantly remind ourselves it's about the kids. And years ago, the statue was given to a retiring trustee, and I think there's nothing better that exemplifies why we do what we do every single day. Congratulations. And now let's honor the real driver of the family. <laughs> Sometimes as a trustee, our families are the ones who suffer the most. Those many a late nights which we fix, our meetings aren't as late as they used to be. Thank you, Mr. Papa. <laughs> but it is hard, because we come home late at night, we're wired from a meeting, and your wife's been taking care of the kids and the family and driving everything, all the many hours that we have. So with this, Julie, would you please come up here? We'd like to thank you, and I'll give you the certificate of appreciation to Ms. Julie Pompa for the three years you allowed us to share Tony as a member of the AASD Board of Trustees. Thank you, Julie. <laughs>
And normally, Mr. Pompa, we'd make you speak from the podium. Say anything else, or you can come to your seat, which I'll come to you like. <laughs> My turn? Your turn, Mr. Pompa. If you'd like to say anything. <laughs> you know, I guess it paid off saying nice things about y'all in the back room, right? <laughs> it worked. <laughs> wow. Um, thank you all uh, for everything, for the kind words that you shared with, with me, with the community. Uh, thank you for your service because, yes, it is a, a lot of work, a lot of hours that we uh, volunteer. And as Mr. Hibbs said, we do pay to run for election, and then when we win, we actually get to volunteer a bunch of hours. So um, thank you all for your service. Uh, of course, I want to thank Julie. Um, you're just absolutely amazing, and I would not be the, the man that I am today without you. Uh, we met when we were very young. Uh, I think I was 19, you were 18 uh, in college. and. Uh, I believe we've molded each other. Uh, and so when I say I would not be the man I am today without you, that's exactly what it is. So uh, thank you for allowing me, encouraging me, supporting me through the last three years uh, to do something that I was very passionate about and, um, and, 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 and taking care of the kids. Uh, kids, thank you. And I, I'm sorry for all the nights that I missed you, you being home. and for the birthday parties that you know we we had to cut short or, or start late like last night because of the, the board meetings and to kayla who i know is watching on uh, online uh from school uh thank you kayla for watching thank you for all your support thank you for always being there for me i love you and i appreciate you uh you know i today was i was i was very pensive today thinking about as you know, as, as you come to an, to uh, a finishing point in something, you kind of look back at, at, at everything from when you started, and uh, and I shared with you all earlier that when when John Hibbs asked me to be his his treasurer for the school board, I had no idea what a school board was. That was four years ago, uh, and so <laughs> I've learned a lot in the last few years. I've learned a lot. Uh, primarily, I, I've learned how uh, how hard you guys work up here. And um, it is bittersweet to, to leave uh, this board because it has been a great honor and a great joy to serve with every one of you up here. Uh, the things that we've accomplished in the last three years uh, have been tremendous, um, especially in the realm of uh, such a large school district. Uh, we've done a lot, and that's a testament to everyone's dedication uh, to Dr. Cavazos and the team that he's put in place. Um, I share this with the staff uh, very often that uh, when we started, when I started on this board, the relationship wasn't such. There was not the trust that we have today between the administration and the board. And I believe that uh, this board has elevated its, its performance level. Uh, the administration has to, and we've turned this district from a district that was focused on compliance to one that today is focused on actually delivering results and we've put the the focus on students and, and if there's one thing that I am proud of of all the things that we've accomplished over the last three years uh, I think I'm most proud of the fact that in everything we've done we put the students first we made sure that that was the compass by which we guided all our actions what is best for the students what is actually going to deliver benefits to the students uh, everything else was secondary uh, to that and I think that that, that's a that's a great accomplishment so um, I'm gonna miss y'all uh, I'm gonna you all have my cell phone number and, and uh, I'm sure uh, I hope you'll call me sometimes uh, but I'm gonna miss <coughs> serving with y'all and I'm gonna miss serving the school district uh, but I leave uh, confidently knowing that um, you will continue everything that we've done and with Keisha Mays sitting here in this spot you will not skip a beat. This board will continue uh, just as you have up to now. You'll continue to deliver great results and greater results, especially with the resources that we have today as a result of the bond. 
Uh, I know you will be great stewards of, of, of those resources because you have demonstrated the ability to do that for the last four years. I have no doubt about that. Um, so it is bittersweet, but I'm glad I'm going to have a lot more time off. <laughs> I'm going to play a lot more golf. I'm actually going to cut my own grass for a change, which I haven't done in, in years, and I'm going to uh, spend a lot more time on my business and, and growing that, which, um, which is exciting to me. I'll miss you all, but I won't be very far. Again, thank you for uh, allowing me to be part of your team and welcoming me as you did when, when I came here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pompa. And thank you to the audience and, and everyone out there allowing us this time to honor one of our own. Uh, as I said, we don't, we don't do it much, so when we do it, it's a really special moment. So thank you, Mr. Pompa. And we are going to have a reception, but we're going to do one piece of business before we go to that reception. You know, we always try and squeeze a couple of things in. So at this moment, we'd like to go. Uh, we'll consider administrative appointments. Dr. Cavazos. Thank you, President Hogg. And I'd like to recommend the candidate discussed in executive session for uh, the principal of Amos Elementary. Do I hear a motion? A motion that we accept the administration's appointment. Second it. I have a motion by Mr. Hibbs and a second by Mr. Pompa. Any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Seven trustees present, seven trustees vote in the affirmative. Dr. Vassos, please introduce. Thank you, President Hogg. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Susan Laird as the principal of Amos Elementary School. <laughs> Susan attended uh, Marquette University in Wisconsin and obtained her Bachelor of Arts in Elementary Education, University of North Texas for her master's. She's most recently a principal in Siegelville Elementary School in Dallas and has been an assistant principal uh, and has taught fourth and fifth grade ESL uh, in, in the elementary school. Susan, congratulations. Anything you'd like to say, anyone you'd like to introduce? Thank you, President Hogg, board members, uh, Superintendent Cavazos. First and foremost, thank you for this opportunity to join the Arlington Independent School District. I look forward to many years with AISD. I would like to also thank my husband and my friend Karen who are here with me tonight and my friends and family who are watching online with their love and support. It allows me to have a career that I truly love. And finally, I would like to say to the faculty, staff, and community of Amos Elementary School, I truly look forward to getting to know you, to learning with you, and most importantly, working with you uh, towards the growth and development of our most important commodity, the students of Amos Elementary. Thank you so much for this honor and opportunity. Ms. Laird, thank you, and Mr. Pompa also, as is our custom, we're going to ask you to follow Mr. Kale out there. We would like to have a, this is a joint reception, Mr. Pompa. You've got to follow, got to still follow rules a little bit more. We've got two more. As is our custom, please follow Mr. Kale. Uh, we'd like to have a receiving line. Please let trustees go first. Uh, we will take about uh, approximately a 20-minute break. Thank you. We'll call this meeting back to order at 8.20 p.m. Next, we have no public hearing, so we'll move on to the next item. We'll come to open forum for agenda items. This is a routine part of the school board's agenda for regularly scheduled meetings. The segment of this meeting provides citizens with an opportunity to share their views of trustees' items that are on the agenda tonight. It is not intended to be a discussion or debate, and trustees will not reply to the speakers. Derogatory comments aimed at individuals will not be tolerated. Personnel matters are not appropriate subjects for open forum. I have one card from our audience. When your name is called, please step to the podium. You'll have five minutes to speak. A lighted timer on the podium will assist you in pacing your presentation. A yellow light will illuminate when there is one minute left for you to complete your presentation. When the red light comes on and the buzzer sounds, please end your presentation. Where is she? There she is. Uh, first, we have Jessica Levy uh, speaking on the FFC recommendations and cost of living representing UA. Good evening, Good Jessica. Evening. President, ba president Hogg, uh, members of the board, Dr. Cavazos, I'm here as president of UEA Arlington, and I'm here to strongly advocate for employee raises. 
Later tonight, you'll hear recommendations from the financial, you'll consider recommendations from the Financial Futures Committee, uh, one which deals with employee salaries. I'm here to present further information to help you retain effective people for the continual growth of Arlington ISD. As we further implement the strategic plan, one key component, component is the recruitment and retention of effective leadership. Last year, you set a precedent by raising the starting teacher salaries to $50,000 and giving all teachers at least a 3% raise and recently adjusted salaries for others. This year, we need to shift our focus from the retention from the recruitment of teachers to the retention of our AISD family. We do not want to see Arlington become a training ground for our surrounding districts. We recruited the best last year and we are training the best this year and I want to keep them. What you have before you is a monthly cost for employee insurances, uh, insurance from TRS Active Care. These are the monthly rates that many of your lowest paid employees cannot afford. Today, thousands of Arlington ISD employees are making less money than they did five years ago. Even with the generous raises you've provided, we are making less because of the rising cost of insurance. You also have before you five years of pave stubs from a current AISD teacher. She brings home, she brings home less money today on an employee-only insurance tier uh, plan two than she did in 2009 at the same level, tier two, but with her and two children. This teacher's salary, this is a teacher's salary, but most concerning are the paraprofessionals, the bus drivers and maintenance personnel whose monthly salary is not much different than these rates. This is why UEA fights hard for raises. Our employees are getting nowhere. Every dollar you've given us has gone directly to the state. Next month, TRS will release new monthly rates and rates are expected to go up from anywhere to 9% to 25%. The problem is not AISD or UEA, but it's the state law that mandates a TRS monopoly. UEA is willing to work with the board, the district, and other teaching associations to get this law modified but a cost of living raise will not cover the actual cost of living. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Next on our agenda is action items. We don't have any action items tonight, so we'll move on to discussion action. First up, we have item A, consider financial future, futures committee recommendations. Dr. Cavazos. Thank you, President Hogg. And this evening, we'd like to present uh, the financial futures recommendations that the committee has uh, come up with. They've worked uh, long hours to uh, examine budget, and so we're going to start with uh, Cindy Powell, our CFO, uh, to start us off in the presentation. Cindy. Good evening, President Hogg, board members, Dr. Cavazos. Uh, the Financial Futures Committee is an advisory committee appointed by the board each year to provide input on the budget for the upcoming year. And uh, you know, this is the vehicle by which the community can participate in our planning process and express its priorities uh, for our budgets, for uh, services, programs uh, that we, we provide to the children of this community. And so it provides a very valuable input to us each year as we develop the budget. And this year is certainly no different. Um, the committee this year has uh, worked tremendously hard. I'm always amazed at uh, how these these individuals come in especially the people who are new to the committee and they they process a tremendous amount of information uh, very quickly uh, and then provide such uh, uh, educated and thoughtful uh, input into the budget process and we appreciate that very much um, we have on the screen here a, a forecast for the next four years for our budget. Uh, this actually was built last spring, or I'm sorry, last summer. Uh, as we were working on last year's adopted budget, we made forecasts for the next four years out. We've made a couple of adjustments to the forecast, uh, but it is very much reflective of the enrollment that we expected at, um, in the summer last year, the uh, employee uh, base that we expected at that point. Uh, it also includes in here some assumptions about um, 
capital needs that we would have that uh, now have been moved and will be covered through the bond program instead of uh, the general operating fund. But it gives us a frame within which uh, the Financial Futures Committee begins to process and prioritize uh, its um, list of suggestions and it's the frame within which this board can even begin to to plan for years out uh, one thing i would like to point out is on the 14 15 year you can see on the line that's labeled surplus and deficit it does show a deficit there and that is only because the board has uh, committed to using surplus fund balance to construct an elementary school uh, east of 360 to relieve crowding uh, in the uh, anderson and crouch elementaries um, that without that particular expenditure of surplus fund balance absent that uh, we would be forecasting a surplus in the neighborhood of 15 million dollars for next year so it kind of helps to put into perspective uh, where we think we're headed. Uh, there are a number of assumptions that go into these forecasts each year, including the fact that um, uh, we assume that uh, state law for funding purposes will remain as it is today. We don't know otherwise. Uh, so, and we certainly know that uh, there is a lawsuit uh, pending on school finance, and we don't know the outcome of that. And we, uh, the legislature will meet in the spring of 15, uh, so that will impact uh, potentially. Uh, that legislature uh, may have some impact on uh, revenue streams for the following biennium that are not yet reflected because they're not yet known. Uh, we, we do these forecasts, we make assumptions, or we don't make any assumption for raises. Uh, that's a board function, so there's no raise forecast in here for future years. Um, and there is a conservative amount of property value growth factored in here. So uh, that, again, just kind of creates the frame for the conversation. And I'm going to turn this immediately over to the FFC chairperson, Dan Malone, and again, thank uh, the mem him and the members of the committee for all of their hard work uh, this year. And um, uh, we always appreciate their input very much. Thank you, sir. President Hogg, Dr. Cavazos, and distinguished public servants of the board, uh, this is the 23rd year uh, that the board has allowed the citizens uh, of our community to provide input into the budget. And we're thankful for that opportunity. Um, we hope that our input this year uh, proves to be both vital and valuable uh, as the purpose uh, uh, of the FFC calls us to do. Uh, and we have several good recommendations to present to you tonight. Before we get started, I'd like to recognize the members of the committee. Um, and I'll read their names, and some of them are here tonight. I also wanted you to know um, the length of service of some of these members. So uh, for the ones that aren't new members, I'd also like to uh, tell you the length of service. So if you'll stand if you're here when your name is read. Uh, Charles Brady is a former chair of the committee. He served over six years on the committee. Robert Brewer has served two years. Justin Chapa has served four years. Uh, Justin is on a pre-planned vacation in Florida this week. Uh, Jacqueline Eccles is the uh, statesman of the group. Uh, Jacqueline has served over 10 years on the FFC board. Demi Garland, Helen Gonzalez, Shannon Han Hanrahan. Uh, oh, good, Helen, I didn't see you. Um, Shannon, I don't know how many years she's served, but it's, uh, she's probably vying with Jacqueline uh, towards that eight to 10 years. Jeff Harris, Nick Heiser, Randy Hendricks, Don Kapalka, uh, Ann Mason has served two years. Keisha Mays, I think it might be a name familiar to most of you. It's her fourth year, you'll hear from her later. Uh, Steve McCullum has served previously on the board. This was his first year back uh, after a hi hiatus. Claire Miller, Eric Salas has served two years. John Simmons, Laura Thurston is serving in her second year. David Wilbanks, you'll hear from in a minute, is serving for his third year, and Venetia Williams. So you can see we're starting to get some seniority and some repeat service, and that experience really helps uh, on FFC. Oops, sorry, I'm, somebody remind me to keep these slides going. Uh, there's those names I just read out. Um, secondly, I'd like to um, express the committee's thanks to uh, Aaron Reich, uh, Dr. Reich, who chaired the uh, board's community engagement committee this year. Also, John Hibbs, 
Uh, Aaron, John, you spent a lot of time with the committee, uh, even as late as this week, uh, meeting with us. And thank you so much uh, for your service to the committee. Um, also, Mr. Pompa on the right wing of the board. Uh, I've, got, I've gotten to uh, work with Tony uh, for my second year as, in chairing the committee. And uh, Tony, I just uh, so much enjoyed being in the audience to hear the accolades um, because I got to experience that too as chair and uh, to see, I think as John said, the radical difference that you actually made on FFC. And uh, one of those radical differences that I really appreciate and I hope the board will continue is uh, your suggestion to, for the staff to follow up uh, five to six to seven months after FFC presents and let the committee or the committee chair know how the district is doing on the recommendations that we made. And you insisted on that and I got to be a part of that meeting this year. I hope to be a part of that meeting in another five or six or seven months. And I think that's a great way. Um, all but one of the committee's suggestions were implemented and you know it was nice to be able to tell this year's coming committee that here's what the action that was taken uh, on last year's committee so thank you I think that made a radical difference in the FFC and and getting our ideas actually implemented so thank you <clears throat> and then we have a, a lot of AISD administration uh, support people and I'd like to read those names every single one of these people uh, some were at every single meeting, but it, uh, all of these were at least at one and, and usually a lot more. Uh, Dr. Gavasa, Cindy Powell, Evan Smith, Michael Hill, uh, Scott Kale, uh, Dr. Melissa Hobrick, uh, Dr. Wally Carter, uh, Tony Drollinger, Debbie Williams, Rhonda Clark, Rick Garcia, Mel Fielding, Mandy Mew, Aaron Perales, Craig Wright, Carly Eubank, Renee Pope, Julie Porter, Danny Freeman, and Penny Scott. And I think I did get Rick Garcia, yes in there so thank you um, to all of those um, now you may recall in last year's presentation um, I mentioned to you at this point in the presentation that I had received some late night emails uh, <coughs> from uh, Miss Powell Cindy Powell um, last year I went ahead and pulled it up last year um, she sent me an, April, an email on April 17th of 2013 that was uh, timed at 12:30 a.m. That means 1230 that comes after midnight. And, uh, and I gave her thanks. Well, I think someone must have obviously scolded Cindy for keeping those kind of hours because um, she's actually shown some improvement um, this year in the time of her emails. Um, the last one I got from Cindy um, was at 1228 AM. <laughs> so she's, she's going to bed two minutes early. And I've, I've actually calculated that if she continues to work two minutes less, in 2028, she won't be working past midnight. <laughs> Cindy, the, the board, in all seriousness, uh, the, the committee, rather, um, knows the hard work you put in. We know that when we ask a question, you go find the answer. Most of them you have in your head the others you have on your laptop and you're always willing to help us and get the information and it makes our job so easy and thank you so much for what you do for the kids and and really the extra mile uh, that you go on behalf of the district and the kids in the district thank you okay the FFC charge you're familiar with this because this is the charge that you gave uh, to us um, just want to point out bullet point two and and four on this one and that is uh, that we were to review and discuss the strategic plan um, and you'll see that we did that uh, in a minute or two and then uh, number four that we review the current general operating budget um, one of the unique things about uh, serving four years on FFC is that the FFC is, is, I think, very malleable. You know, we came in one year and we were having cuts and we studied the facilities assessment and we came to you with the cuts that, that we thought the budget needed. Um, based on that first page that uh, Cindy went over with you, we see what appears to be some cushion. We don't know how much, uh, but we think there may be some cushion in the budget. So you'll see we came with what we think the board ought to be considering um, as additions uh, to the budget 
Um, so that's one of the things I appreciate about FFC is, is that uh, malleability and flexibility. Um, also in the charge, um, we are to identify and prioritize any programs, departments, or expenditures that the, the board should consider adding to or <coughs> reducing deleting from the budget. As I said, this year we don't have any deletions or reductions. They're all additions. Um, and they're obviously suggestions. We're a, we're a citizens committee. We work closely with the staff, but we understand these are advisory uh, uh, recommendations to you. And we fully expect the board to uh, exercise your fiduciary responsibility in vetting these and making sure that the district can afford all of these. We certainly understand that. Um, FFC meetings, I'll just point out real quick. Um, here you see the first meeting we focused on the strategic plan and the budget uh, we went over that's especially helpful for the first year members uh, the second meeting we went over graduation requirements curriculum audit and instructional model and you will see in just a minute that those are the areas that comprise two of our subcommittees we studied that uh, we continued the subcommittee model this year so the third the second half of the third meeting we started on our subcommittee uh, discussions after uh, hearing about the capital needs steering committee recommendations. We spent one and a half meetings on the subcommittee discussions. Um, that's pushing it. Um, if I had to make one change next year, I'd say the subcommittees are better off with at least two or maybe two and a half meetings to really think through uh, all the issues and, and get all the details that we need. Uh, and then we spent two meetings uh, discussing it, uh, the subcommittee recommenda recommendations, voting on it. Um, and, uh, and then we also allowed individual recommendations. So you'll see after the three subcommittees present, um, we also have a couple of uh, recommendations that were made by individuals. So uh, to summarize, we had a total of 35 recommendations made. 21 of those received majority support, uh, about 60%. I have to explain uh, that second bullet point down. One of the advantages of the subcommittee process is that sometimes the recommendations are similar or overlap and to the extent they do we combine those so it's probably actually more than 60 percent but some of the recommendations uh, were combined uh, one received a majority no vote um, <clears throat> and i also wanted to give you a little more detail 11 of the recommendations uh, passed with zero uh, no votes and another eight passed with just one or two no votes. So essentially 19 out of the 21 recommendations had what I can consider to be significant supermajority votes, a pretty good indication of consensus uh, under the, uh, within the committee. And there was obviously give and take in the recommendations to be able to come to the, that kind of consensus. I also want to just explain real quickly, and we've gotten this question before, but the, you'll see on all the recommendations there may be more abstain votes than what you're accustomed to seeing. Um, some of those are the typical uh, abstention reasons, a conflict of interest, um, but um, we also use that vote uh, because we have a lot of information coming in and sometimes you're just overwhelmed and the committee member isn't ready to say I really like that or I don't like that. You, and so we use the abstain quite frankly as kind of a neutral. We don't, we're not fully in favor, but we don't want to say we're against either. So it's, we kind of use that as a neutral position. So that's a reason that you'll see uh, probably a larger number of abstains than you might otherwise uh, expect. So the estimated impact of all of our recommendations uh, is just under $5 million, 4.982. And uh, we always like to emphasize that these are best estimate rough guesses. Uh, and those, those could obviously change. So uh, for um, our recommendations um, themselves, we had three subcommittees. Uh, the first that we'll present is curriculum and instruction. Uh, David Wilbanks chaired that committee. He'll be presenting, uh, and Laura Thurston was the vice chair. The second committee will follow, um, uh, subcommittee will follow, and that's graduation requirements and assessments. And Mason chaired that committee. Her daughter is playing in a softball championship tournament tonight. She wasn't able to make it. She may come in late. Um, so Vice Chair Robert Brewer will be presenting that uh, subcommittee report. And then followed after that, uh, effect, efficiency and effectiveness, E&E &E we call it. 
Uh, Justin Chapa is in Florida on a pre-planned vacation, and so Keisha Mays, uh, incoming uh, AISD trustee, will be presenting that report. Um, and by the way, the first two subcommittees, we've sorted their recommendations in the largest dollar amount to the smallest dollar amount. The last one, efficiency and effectiveness, will start with the smallest dollar amount and go to the largest dollar amount. So we're going to start big and end big. <laughs> David, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. President Hogg, ladies and gentlemen of the board, Dr. Cavazos, uh, I want to go over the recommendations that came out of my subcommittee. Uh, first up, we have um, a proposal for a response to intervention specialist in the secondary school level. Um, the specific proposal is to hire at least three RTI specialists at the junior high level and two at the high school level so that they can spend at least one day a week at each campus to help with RTI, um, which at the secondary level, as you know, elementary school, it's easy to implement those kind of programs and do pullouts and what's required in coordinated instruction for RTI. It's a little bit tougher uh, issue at the secondary level. Uh, and so this proposal is to fill in the gaps for RTI at the secondary level. And the cost on that was estimated at $272,636. The next proposal was one to budget so that all campuses can equally participate in extracurricular uh, competitions like DI, uh, UIL, academic competitions, uh, competitions, na uh, National History Day, etc. cetera. Um, this uh, proposal came out of my experience with DI for the first time this year, and I was blown away. That's a program that aligns perfectly with our strategic plan to teach essential 21st century skills to our students. And uh, the tough part of that is after seeing district after district in our region ship in um, students from every elementary school um, in their district, I thought, well, why is it that uh, we only have a handful of elementary schools and junior high and high schools that participate in this program? This is something that aligns perfectly uh, there's a lot of other academic competitions and so um, knowing that at those title one schools it's the teachers and not the parent volunteers that we're going to have to rely on so we want to make sure that each campus has a, a pool of money a stipend that um, they can request funds for to uh, attend or participate in those type of academic competitions. The estimated cost for that is $100,000, which includes some money for promoting those type of events at every campus across the district as well. The uh, next proposal is to hire an advanced academic specialist at the secondary schools. This is um, related to our proposal um, number 32 below. Uh, so that uh, the pur purpose of this is to provide um, compliance with GT and increase our participation um, and results in, um, in programs like IB, um, AP, dual credit, uh, and other programs for um, our advanced students. Um, the cost on that was estimated 86364 and then that ties in with uh, Proposal 32, which um, is to hire um, and train a teacher at, uh, uh, to train a teacher at each elementary school to be appointed the GT lead coordinator at that campus. So they can be the one responsible for professional development at that campus and helping teachers across that campus provide GT services so we maintain compliance with state requirements. And the proposal, uh, the cost on that is estimated about $53,000, okay? And I believe that is, no, I've got one more. Um, and then finally, um, in past years, we had recommendations to increase participation at um, summer camps um, to eliminate that gap that occurs in learning and also provide additional services 
to students across the uh, district. Um, there's a lot of other camps that are uh, available uh, throughout um, from uh, UTA and, and other organizations um, and we're not doing a good job of marketing those and providing uh, letting parents know that what resources are available for transportation and um, getting the students to those um, summer camps which we know are critical in, in preventing that gap of knowledge that occurs each year and, and to keep students in, engaged uh, over the summer months and the cost of that uh, since this is mainly a um, promotion, um, uh, we're estimating uh, $5,000 for that proposal. Okay. And I believe we're taking questions afterwards or during each one. We'll, we'll let the trustees just, yeah. If any clarification questions, we can definitely take them now. Any questions on this section from colleagues? Dr. Reich. I just have one, one quick one. On the, uh, the one vote that was close, the 9-7, uh, can you maybe give us some information on the, uh, the no votes, what, what their uh, rationale was saying it was so close? Um, this was a long time ago, so I'm going to have to uh, maybe um, get, uh, help jog my memory. But this was very similar to another proposal uh, that was in another subcommittee um, and you know this proposal stemmed out of an issue um, where the three campuses at the high school that have IB have a special coordinator that's full-time that does things like coordinating make sure that they don't stack up big tests and major projects on the same day and also uh, uh, coordinate um, not only with the um, uh, the teachers but also with the students to help them and make sure they smooth out any of those those major issues that crop up week to week um, and s several of the um, high school principals thought it would be nice to have that across the board not just for IB but for also um, uh, those other programs like AP and dual credit so any additional so, David, those would be uh, specifically for the two schools that we don't have IB, which would be Seguin and Martin. That's what the, uh, that would be the shared costs for those uh, two schools. Yeah, this would be, this would be to, I'm not sure how the cost broke out, how we broke those costs out. Maybe Evan can provide some input or Cindy, but um, this was would be to add those resources specifically at those campuses that don't have those and I think what we did is we took that IB coordinator and made that uh, uh, split them between IB and those other advanced programs so we're we're sharing that resource um, across those programs on those campuses that do have IB uh, on the advanced academic specialist, that was actually a district level specialist, uh, a single position, so it's costed out uh, according to our new salary schedule. Uh, what David's referring to on the uh, hiring two people for the campuses that uh, don't already have them is a recommendation in the next section that, that we're going to see. It is kind of similar, but, uh, but it's a little further down on the list. So that's where some of the discussion was, just as I just got conf <laughs> was confused on the two positions, but um, that's where some of our heated discussion is, do we need both? What's the difference between the two? So if Thank I you. recall correctly. Thank you. So. I think that's it, Mr. Woolbanks. All right. Thank you. And, and I would just add, that, that is, as you pointed out, Dr. Reich, that is the only recommendation that we're bringing that actually didn't have a majority of the all the votes cast, including the abstains, um, but it's a district-wide position. Good evening, President Hogg, Good Superintendent evening. Cavazos, members of the board. My name is Robert Brewer, and I'm going to be going over the graduations requirements and assessment. Um, our first recommendation. Um, stemmed out of that there was an overwhelming consensus of the the committee that um, we need to to add counselors to um, to our our staff junior high and, and high school and particularly 
And at the time we were uh, working on our proposal, the, the administration was uh, working on a study for it, and they, they didn't have it uh, fully fleshed out yet, but we went ahead and made our votes for um, 26 new counselors to be divided between junior high and high schools based on student need at each campus with a target ratio averaging 300 to 1. Uh, the estimated cost of this would be uh, $1,654,961, um, and it passed 18 to 0. Our next uh, recommendation was funding for a universal screener. Um, this recommendation uh, is that the district budget for an objective universal screener as a part of the uh, response to intervention diagnostic um, and progress monitoring, which would promote minimal testing and provide optimal results. Essentially, it's going to get rid of the, the platoons of tests that the kids are taking and provide a comprehensive exam that's fully integrated that's going to give um, better results. The, the cost of this is uh, $452,000. Uh, and our next recommendation was an advanced academics coordinator at each high school. This is the one that uh, is similar to David's proposal. What this one, uh, let me look at my notes here. Um, <clears throat> this one's basically going to be working with students to help align their advanced academic programs. Um, the the um, six traditional high schools each have a dean of instruction and four of the six have an IB coordinator. The IB coordinator position is going to be redefined uh, under this proposal to an advanced academics coordinator who's going to oversee IB and AP classes, um, dual credit. Uh, they're going, the advanced academic coordinator positions uh, are, two are going to have to be added to aid the high schools that don't already have an IB coordinator. Uh, principal input is going to be considered on the option. Uh, and um, we, in talking to the principals, we found that um, they preferred a 50-50 IB to AP uh, split for this position for the, the campuses that have IB. So that was, that was based on um, the principal's recommendations. The cost of this proposal is $115,000. And last on the list is um, parent orientation on graduation requirements. Uh, we recommended to junior high school principals that they implement an intensive uh, parent orientation at each junior high uh, school campus uh, prior to the high school spring reg registration where counselors educate incoming ninth graders and parents about graduation requirements, endorsement options, college and career readiness, early college, dual credit, and other factors that have to be considered when setting a student plan for the high school experience and beyond. This is uh, meant to work in conjunction with the uh, CTHEI class that the eighth graders already take. And it's just basically um, helping get the parents educated as well as the students so that they can make uh, more intelligent decisions and get, help guide their students on to a successful high school career. And that's the end of my proposals. Any questions? Thank you. Good evening, President Hogg, other trustees, and Dr. Cavazos. Um, I served as co-chair on this uh, efficiency and effectiveness um, subcommittee. And um, I do want to make sure that I do say the name of our chairperson who chose to be at Disney World instead of here giving this. His name is Justin Choppa. <laughs> Very glad to step in. Um, I will go ahead and get started. Our first recommendation, number 10, uh, additional programming for implementation of strategic plan. Um, the recommendation was that the district should provide additional programming regarding how district personnel can implement the strategic plan at a personal level. And as you see, there's no cost associated with this. And we use the word programming because the things that we were hearing from different employees was everybody wants to buy into the strategic plan, everybody wants to understand the strategic plan, but even more importantly, we want to make sure that every employee, not only in the classroom or at administration, but to our janitors, that everybody has a part to play in the strategic plan and that they are very important to implementing that strategic plan. So that's what the committee wanted to make sure that we pulled out of this recommendation. 
Recommendation number 18, implement class size accountability. Now this is probably interesting because normally for FFC we get up here and talk about reducing the number of class size, so this is a new one. Um, we want to implement an accountability mechanism whereby high school campus administrators must justify the need for classes that exceed 30 students. Um, we know that at the high school level that there are some classes that may have only 12 to 14 students, while there's other classes that may have more than 35. This recommendation came forth from some teachers that said they had more than the recommended students in their class and they were fine with that. So to be more efficient, if a teacher can say, you know what, I have 36 students in my class, but it's fine, we can handle it, everybody is achieving at the rate that they should, then they should be allowed to make that recommendation to be more efficient to have the number of students in their classroom. Our next recommendation, number 12, family engagement teams. The district should create family engagement teams at campuses that do not already have one with funding as needed to operate the teams. Now, we know that the district did create a parent and community engagement position in 1314 from the strategic plan. And the, we had Mr. Perales come and speak to us, and we understand that for Title I schools that there are liaisons to help with parent engagement. And what the committee is wanting to say with this recommendation is for the schools that do not have that, because Mr. Perales explained that that's who he's working with at each of the schools. So we were thinking about the schools that did not have that liaison, how is he to work with those schools? Because we know we have a lot of schools in the district, but the committee feels that parent engagement is very, very important. So for the schools that don't have that liaison, we wanted to create it so that Mr. Perales would have a go-to person at every single campus within the district to make sure that we had full parent engagement. Um, the cost that we came up with this was $8,700. And basically we calculated that saying that the 29 schools that currently did not have a liaison would pay for that assuming they would have three events per year and they'd be $100 per event. So we came up with this dollar amount. Our next recommendation, number 31, funding for student council leadership. Recommendation to fund a student council leadership budget of $5,000 for each AISD high school with an active elective student council. The purpose of the budget is to standardize the programs between high schools and promote leadership training by allowing incoming student council officers to attend a Texas Association of Student Council summer leadership workshop and other conferences sponsored by TACS if funds allow. Um, the reason why we thought this was important was once again kind of following along the strategic plan line of leadership. We want to encourage leadership and some schools can raise the funds. Some principals choose to use their allotted funds to pay for that, but then there are other schools that either don't have the funding or that's not what they've chosen to do or maybe their school doesn't have an active student council that could participate because of the cost. So once again, we wanted to make it equitable that if we have student council in place, we like to see all of our students at each of our high schools be able to attend that leadership conference, particularly incoming students. Also, I think our understanding was that that is hosted here in Arlington. So it would be really nice to be able to support something in our own backyard with our own homegrown Arlington students. The way that we came up with this cost, was $5,000 for each six high schools. That equals $30,000. Okay, our next recommendation, number 16, police officers eat for free. Uh, this would allow our uniformed police officers to eat in our cafeterias and show a presence for our students and faculty. It also adds more armed security for a fraction of the cost of hiring more armed security. Now, I don't know if y'all have seen that video that's going around of the police officer that pulls over the people in their car and then pull them over and they say, just hold on, I'll be right back. And they come back to the car with a cone of ice cream. Well, this is kind of that same mentality that we would have the officers there with a presence on the campus during lunchtime. One thing so they could show up and they could see officers don't just show up because something bad's happening. They show up too just to say, hi, hello, we're here, my name's officer so-and-so, and if they show up, then we'll feed them. The way that we came up with our cost here was we were highly assuming 100 officers per day would stop by our cafeterias to eat lunch for 177 school days at $3.25 a meal. 
So once again, the, the full intent behind this was to have some presence of police officers on campus to help kind of strengthen that partnership. And once again, to show some of our students that police officers don't just show up when something bad is happening, but that they're good for our community. Okay, number 11, add teacher leader interventionist positions. Add teacher leader interventionist positions at Bailey, Bowles, and Young Junior High Schools. These are the junior high schools that currently do not have an instructional coach. Um, the need for instructional coaches is significant at the junior high level. The strategic plan calls for providing the highest quality teachers possible, which is also crucial to the implementation of the new instructional model. So having instructional coaches at all of the junior highs is a matter of equity so that the high achieving and non-disadvantaged students are served in the same manner as low income or disadvantaged students. Basically, we just want equity. If if the need is there for some of the junior highs, we feel that at risk is pretty much at all the junior highs. I don't think you could just pick out a few schools and say there's at risk here and not at risk at the other schools. So once again, this is to provide equity amongst the junior highs. Okay, our next recommendation is equity adjustment for teachers. Number 34, recommend a 0.5% equity adjustment for teachers with 20 to 29 years experience. And the full intent behind this is uh, we know that there's been adjustments made prior to that 20 to 29 years of experience. But I think what the committee is really trying to say is that they'd like to make sure we do see a balance. Um, we love the fact that we want to bring in and retain great teachers, but we feel like there should also be a balance of making sure that we keep the experienced teachers that are here so they can share their wisdom, their knowledge, and once again, just create that balance. Not saying it has to be 50-50, but let's show them some support as well. Our next recommendation is increase the district's contribution towards employee health insurance to return to the $260 per month per participating employee. I believe currently the district pays $225 per month for our professionals and $240 a month for our para and auxiliary participants. So um, once again, we're just asking for an increase to try to return that back to the $260 for the district. Our next recommendation, number 20, is salary. Oop, how do I go back? Okay, I'll read off of mine while we fix that. Thank you. A salary increase for all non-teacher personnel of not less than an appropriate cost of living increase. Um, we know that the board approved um, adjustment identified through salary market study at your regular meeting in March. So one thing we're trying to do with this recommendation is to first of all show support of you doing that. But in addition to that, we wanna also make sure that if anything changes, if anything else goes up between now or then, that whatever the increase is, the minimum is at least a cost of living. Now, because of budgetary actions, we didn't try to throw out a number, but we just want you to be cognizant that our recommendation is saying, if anything changes, let's make sure that that increase is a minimum of at least a cost of living. Number 17, salary increase for all teachers of not less than an appropriate cost of living increase. Uh, once again, this is exactly the same intent as number 20. Um, make sure that anything that is increased for salary, the minimum is at least cost of living. So if anything else changes, insurance costs go up, anything else changes, make sure that, we just wanna make sure that you're cognizant of making sure that that increase is at least cost of living. So our total recommendations for our efficiency and effectiveness is $2,218,046. Any questions? Any questions for Justin? <laughs> uh, no, no questions, so what was your name again? <laughs> Keisha, that's right. That's right. No, I, I don't have any specific questions for you or your subcommittee. Thank you uh, for the presentation. I, I just have some general comments, uh, both for my, my colleagues as well as the committee. Uh, our community engagement committee, myself, Mr. Hibbs, and Mr. Pompa, um, I, I thank you. We were tasked with uh, creating a committee of uh, community that was well representative 
of our entire school district, that we had equal representation uh, from the district, uh, from every high school cluster, as well as uh, uh, teachers, professionals, et cetera. And that was no easy task. But with that, the, the point is to provide us the opportunity for the, to hear the community directly and what they're looking for. And uh, Mr. Malone and uh, subcommittee chairs, thank you for a great volume of work. Um, I don't know if people truly understand, unless you've done this, that there is a huge volume of information overload uh, to go through the, the, the budget for the entire district, projections of that budget for the entire district, uh, trying to comprehend what's all in that budget, plus our strategic plan and our requirements and our expectations as a board and what we're setting forth as the vision of the district, to do that and then completely create, completely create on your own. This, this isn't a, a rubber stamp committee of uh, we'll get our way as, as a board this way. This isn't a rubber stamp idea for staff to invoke what they really want. This is something for the citizens to truly come up with things on their own uh, together, uh, individually and then together, uh, for what they see as needs uh, for our district. And e even the very subcommittees is something that this committee created. Uh, what they were, how they were divided, what they were called, and then all of the individual uh, discussion items that eventually formed into recommendations. Lots of hours, lots of discussion. Um, I, I think there's trends that can be seen in this with a, a focus on, on a, a advanced learning, gifted and talented, but also equity and uh, talking to the needs of the entire district as our student body population as well as our staff. And I just want to thank you. I commend you for coming up with uh, some some very creative ideas and, and uh, offering up some uh, opportunities for us to definitely uh, uh, consider. And your work is for naught, as Mr. Malone said, we, uh, with uh, Mr. Pompa's direction last year, uh, had uh, the process uh, tweaked so that the follow-up will occur uh, and that will continue. Uh, that, that's, abs that's an absolute. Um, so, the, the purpose from our committee is, as Community Engagement Committee tonight uh, with this presentation um, is really to hear and, and accept the report of this committee, of this Financial Futures Committee. And as a committee, that is seeing this as a discussion action item, I, I would uh, uh, word that as a motion that, that we accept uh, this uh, committee's report and then uh, in the very near future, we will be considering these recommendations in detail uh, along with, with staff and, and their, their uh, responses and, and information, including how each one of these tie to our strategic plan, which is, is crucial uh, because that's, that's what we have to keep our eye on that ball. So I, I just, that's all I wanted to say. And thank you again, Mr. Malone and the committee, all of you. Uh, thank you very much for your work. I appreciate it all. Thank you. Dr. Reich, could I ask you, I think they've got two more slides to cover. Yeah, if I could just have it, it yeah. Could I ask you to please, since you didn't yeah, yeah. make it as a motion, would you be willing to pull that sure. motion right Absolutely. now and then we'll ask for that yeah, second. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Mr. Ballone. Thank you for your kind words. And I'll say uh, some wise person referred to this process as an infusion of ideas, and that's what we think it is. You're getting an infusion of ideas from the community. Uh, and let me say thank you back. Not every school district does this and involves the community. And so that's one of the, the reasons that AISD has the spirit that we do is because of your willingness to continue involving the community. So thank you for, for doing that. We do have a, two more uh, recommendations to present. Um, these were individual recommendations. The way we do it is we get them all on the board, the committee, subcommittees deal with them. And then if somebody wants to bring back something that a subcommittee didn't, uh, that didn't come out of subcommittee, or frankly, in this case, these were more last minute um, uh, recommendations that the subcommittee didn't have time to deal with. So um, two pretty straightforward uh, recommendations. Uh, the first is um, that we recommend the board review the entire health care program. We understand you're doing that already. We understand the limitations of TRS and I think it's 2017, but we just wanted to 
encourage that process and say we we're with you we want you to continue doing that um, and then the last one is funding for an SAT online course um, this is an online course for every sophomore and junior although that may change depending on what the board wants to do if, if you wanted to start it halfway through the sophomore year so it would go through the first half of the senior year that might be a better um, allocation if the college board will let you do that but at a very low cost I think it's two dollars and thirty cents per student we can give every sophomore and junior or or half sophomore to half senior in the district access to ten online SAT practice tests uh, with immediate feedback on their uh, results 24 7 access um, prep support and then the great thing is every student across the district can have this and you don't have to come out of pocket you don't even have to leave your house if you have internet connection so we think this is kind of a low cost uh, effective way to help students and it's the SAT scores as you know that gets you into college that gets you uh, scholarships that's what they base it on or at least in large part um, so uh, the total cost of that uh, recommendation is twenty five thousand six hundred and twenty nine uh, that may need be negotiable at the college board um, we did have one uh, no vote and that was to uh, for an additional edu special education support staff person and you can see that one uh, failed pretty uh, resoundly so um, with that I'll put you back and, and thank you again thank you for your kind words about the committee and um, this is a great process as Ms. Powell said it is interesting this is my fourth year to serve but it's interesting how citizens can come together and and uh, hopefully make a difference and help you in the important task of forming the budget thank you thank you Mr. Malone Mr. Pompa thank you President Hogg thank you Mr. Malone for your presentation and the entire committee I want to use this uh, opportunity as a recruiting time for next year's uh, Futures Finance Committee. This is a way that uh, without having to actually go through the process of getting elected, you can actually make a serious impact in the considerations, the financial considerations of this board. And I served on that board uh, a few years ago, and I wanted to make sure that we, um, in, when we retweak the process, to be respectful of the dedication and the time the, the dozens of hours of time and, and sometimes hundreds of hours of time when you include all the reading that you have to do at home that uh, citizens donate to us and we wanted to make sure that uh, in being respectful of that uh, we uh, bring the recommendations and eventually when we have the, the staff uh, input we can actually vote to uh, approve or not and then give you guys basically a scorecard on, on how we did and so Again, for uh, citizens out there that are interested in the finance of our school district and how we manage that, I think this is a great opportunity because you really do get to know uh, the intricacies and the, and the, and the uh, complexity of the funding for the school district, and then you can have some input uh, on that. And this board has been shown uh, that it does listen to that committee, and we take those recommendations very seriously. So again, thank you for your recommendation. and then anyone out there that is interested in serving this committee usually we have the applications that start in, in, in December or beginning of January and thank you to, to those of, the, of you that have done it for several years that's a lot of work and we do really appreciate it thank you President Hall thank you Mr. Papa Dr. Reich uh, yes uh, if uh, it would please the board again can we uh, move I move as as committee with with that second uh, being from committee uh, that we accept this report uh, for later consideration as part of our budget process for this this year this okay. coming year we have a motion by dr. Reich no second needing coming from committee discussion dr. Reich one point of clarification this is not accepting any of the and committing to any of the commitments it is just no. accepting the report and in future meetings the discussion will come as we start diving into budget sessions a absolutely recently. absolutely just point of clarification I want to make sure everyone knew we weren't automatically spending those dollars where they are so but they will come in budget discussion so sorry FFC but we do have further discussion at this point uh, seeing no further discussion I will ask for a vote Except me. Seven trustees present, seven trustees in affirmative. Thank you, FFC. 
we'll have many more discussions over this. Next, we'll move on to the next item. Uh, item B, consider junior high athletic program update and expansion. Dr. C. Thank you, President Hogg. And at this time, I'd like to ask Michael Hill to come up and do a presentation on junior high athletics. And you know we expanded junior high athletic uh, offerings last year uh, to include tennis and soccer. And so we have an update on that as well as a recommendation. Mr. Hill. <laughs> Thank you. President Hogg, uh, board members, Dr. Cavazos, as just mentioned, we did go through this process last year where we had an expansion in the junior high athletic program. And so what we want to do tonight is just give you an update of where we are with regard to the outcomes of that expansion and then a request for uh, uh, continued expansion. Uh, as we continually do, we uh, tie our uh, uh, movements and actions in the district to the strategic plan. Uh, and, and here, objective three, 100 percent of our students will be actively involved in extracurricular and or co-curricular activities. 2013-14, uh, the board approved the expansion of junior high tennis and of junior high soccer. Uh, to date, uh, 181 junior high students have taken advantage of this opportunity to participate in the tennis program. And what we wanted to look at was how many of those students were unduplicated, meaning that they are tennis only. And because of this opportunity, 156 more students have taken uh, advantage of tennis. Uh, they competed to date in 42 matches or tournaments. With regard to the soccer program, and we're right in the middle of that right now, uh, 963 junior high students have taken advantage of this uh, soccer expansion. 195 of those are unduplicated or soccer only. And so those are opportunities for students that otherwise had not been for this would not have had an opportunity for that. Uh, to date, again, they've competed in 12 games with 84, um, with 84 uh, games remaining. The budgetary impact for 2013-14, with all that it encompassed it, with equipment and stipends and transportation and the like, uh, was $133,954 for soccer and $53,540 for tennis. This was what was approved in the 13-14 budget. We're going to recommend to you uh, to expand this, these opportunities for the 14-15 year to include uh, junior high wrestling. And you may want to ask why, why wrestling out of all the other sports? Uh, you don't want to ask why wrestling. <laughs> okay. At any rate, we did, uh, Coach O.J. Kemp, our athletic director, uh, work with the uh, staffs at the campuses to uh, do a survey. And tennis and soccer rose to the top, followed very closely by wrestling. And so that's why one of the reasons that we want to bring that one forward this year. Again, it's the feasibility of, of implementation. Uh, it's, uh, we have uh, the facilities to do that, and we can kind of model the tennis program. And we have the facilities for that at the high school campuses is one of the reasons why wrestling. Again, this uh, program uh, can be provided with minimal cost, which you'll see in a second. It, it provides the students, again, that opportunity to belong to something, uh, to be attached to their school and, and, and uh, in alignment with that high school uh, uh, to continue that connection to those uh, athletic uh, activities and sports. Logistics uh, interest meetings will be held in the month of March, uh, be held on the high school campus, parent permissions, and those high school coaches will get them in there and explain to these parents and these uh, potential wrestlers what the program is all about, some of the requirements of it, and just give them that, that parent information that, that they so, so desire to have. Uh, practice, uh, again, will be held on the high school campus by the high school coaches, uh, 3.30 to 5.30 daily. Uh, we'll transport the students from their junior high to the high school. Uh, parents would pick the student athletes up from the high school at the end of wrestling practice. So junior high kid at Campus X move to the high school for wrestling practice and then be released from there to the parents. Uh, competition, we're looking at one match per week in April and May uh, held on the high school campuses and we wanted to have some flexibility in what that schedule would look like, whether it be dual matches or tri matches. Uh, some of the wrestling coaches talked about those options to get the kids more opportunities to compete and more practice time on the front end of it. Antici anticipated participation, we're looking at, uh, and, and we feel like it would be more than this, but we just kind of want to be conservative up front and go with eighth grade only, male and female, uh, 20 students per junior high campus for a total of 240 student athletes for wrestling for next year. Uh, Financial impact, uh, we're looking at the teaching units. It wouldn't cost us anything with regard to a teaching unit. We're looking at a head wrestling uh, uh, stipend, uh, 12 of those times our regular uh, coaching stipend of 801.75. 
and where necessary, if supported by the numbers, an assistant wrestling coach, 12 of those. Uh, and again, if supported by the numbers. Uh, the equipment cost there would be a headgear and a singlet, a total of $65 per student athlete times the uh, 240 gives us a one-time cost for right now of $15,600. Again, that would be for the first year to get it started because you wouldn't need to buy that equipment uh, on, on a yearly basis. You may need some replacement, but not the entire startup. Officials, uh, $1,050. Transportation for matches, a $4,000 uh, amount there. And then uh, a total of $39,892 uh, for the implementation of junior high wrestling. And so we do recommend that we add junior high wrestling for the eighth grade students for the 14-15 school year. Any questions? Dr. Reich. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Hill. Um, I just, for clarification purposes, the, uh, the schedule is not going to negatively impact their academic schedule. Uh, the, the uh, transportation will happen what appears to be basically the last period of the day, which in, it would be their normal athletics or PE class, I, I would presume? That is correct. Okay. Uh, I'm just making, making sure. I, I, was, I was pretty sure that's what it was. Okay. Well, uh, that's great. I think it's, uh, it's going to be uh, something that will be filled up pretty quickly. I, <laughs> we anticipate yeah, that. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Hibbs. Mr. Hill, I appreciate you uh, putting those numbers out there. The soccer and the uh, tennis numbers are pretty impressive. Uh, when I looked at those numbers, I was um, uh, pleasantly pleased because uh, we've had parents asking for these for many, many years and um, budgetary costs and um, such did not allow us to do it. The um, administration was able to uh, work with the athletic department, come up with some creative ways, and uh, we're offering sports that uh, uh, we uh, hadn't offered in the past. And one of the important things I want to make sure that uh, the public's very informed about, uh, there's a lot of times uh, individuals say, we'll go and look at a district and say, wow, there's a lot of money that's been spent on, on athletics. And in re reality, out of our uh, um, operating uh, yearly operating budget, uh, we spend about 1.5 percent on athletics. Uh, it's it's in comparison to a lot of other districts, in comparison yeah. to a district of our size, it's that's not that much. Um, so. I like the fact that we're being able to find these things, be able to be competitive we're, uh, because we do have so many um, uh, junior highs within our own district. We can have our own um, um, encapsulated um, district for them to be able to um, basically compete within and we don't have to go searching, but we do know that other districts, Mansfield, all. Uh, uh, many of our surrounding districts um, have had tennis, had had soccer, has had um, wrestling, and our our coaches have said they they were at a disadvantage uh, because these these other schools are being able to uh, garner those kids' um, um, talents and be able to form them. So, um, you know, I I'm appreciative that we, uh, we've taken this step, and I'm in. Um, firm belief that this is the direction as a board that we should move. Uh, we do actually have a uh, wrestling coach in um, uh, the audience. He was not invited. Uh, I don't know why he showed up. Uh, but um, uh, Coach Dunn is over at Martin High School and, and Coach Dunn actually was able to have um, several All-Americans. Uh, they went and competed uh, in, down in Virginia Beach so this uh, just uh, last month and several uh, All-Americans came out of Martin High School uh, in wrestling. Um, coach, if you wouldn't mind, I actually want to ask a, a question of, of a coach. Could you come down for a second? Uh, yeah, this is I on, did, I did. we don't usually pull people out of the audience without asking them. So I, See if he shows up to a board meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, coach, I yes, want to make sure that this isn't going to be too demanding on your time. This, is, I think this is something that you've wanted and you pushed for. Yes. Uh, is this feasible 
with the way that it's being laid out? Uh, yes, it's after uh, most of the high school seasons. Um, I know I coach softball, so it'll be after softball season and uh, kind of end of the, end of the year uh, coaching. Okay, tell me, uh, tell, uh, Martin has one of the larger programs. Uh, how many kids do you, would you say that, that are in the boys and girls that are competing at the high school uh, level right now for uh, the teams? For the boys, uh, the numbers I turned in uh, at the end of the year report, we had 97 boys come out for wrestling, and we ended the season with about 85. Uh, on the girls section, our girls, our numbers are growing. Uh, we started with 21, and we ended with 19. Okay. And for the numbers for the coaches as a district, we, we kind of put out there that it's a 15 to 1 ratio. Is that, is that per coach? Is that it, What's our ratio that we have uh, student wrestlers to coach, you know, generally in classes or? At the high school level? At the high school level. Uh, for the boys, it's 15 for one coach, 30 for two, 60 for three. Uh, for girls, it's 10 for one, 20 for two, and 40 for three. Okay. And so your boys level at Martin, you have three uh, coaches, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. You have two of them that have uh, full-time st or two stipends, and then you have one that has one stipend. Is that correct, or how does that work? Yeah. Well, there's two of us that coach two sports and one that coaches one sport. Okay. Um, so you've got two coaching, two sports, and then but your numbers are actually over um, the ratio, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Where you've got one coach that's only uh, he should be double block, but you, you your other two coaches are double block, but one coach is only single blocked. Yes. Okay. Is that causing any particular issues at your campus? I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. I want to ask you a question. Here. <laughs> yeah. um, They're not asking you. I'm asking you. <laughs> Is it causing any issues? Well, in the one class I have by myself, I have I, – first semester I had 41 kids by myself. Uh, this semester I have 36 kids by myself in the okay. athletic period. Okay. When, we, when we're saying that it shouldn't be more than 15 to 1? Yes. Okay. And, but yet we, we have a third coach there that only has one uh, – is only blocked for one. But if he was blocked for two, then um, the load wouldn't be as heavy. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I, I pulled that one up. I, <laughs> I put you on the spot there, but I, it, it's for a purpose. If we're going to <clears throat> then expand this – I want to make sure that we have equity across the uh, each one of the campuses that we don't have programs that are very successful but are being challenged because there's not enough uh, uh, coaches for the number of kids that we have in place. Would that be fair to am – I, am I making a good no, statement? That, or is yeah, that that's a, fair. That's fair to okay. say. Okay. Um, okay. Do I, I, you have anything you want to tell us? No, I appreciate you guys okay. looking at junior high wrestling. It's okay. going to be a big helpful. There's a lot of other districts that have junior high wrestling, and as we're competing, uh, Arlington has one of the biggest programs overall uh, for participation, boys and girls. I think we have the biggest girls program at Sam Houston in the yep. state. Uh, Amy McNeese is a does, has done a great job there, and I actually worked with her at the Woodlands. We coached together there, uh, and then we have one of the biggest programs on the boys' side in the state too. So. I think. Well, it's uh, generally um, uh, Arlington, Martin, or a Arlington school in Allen that are going one, two in state, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Okay, Which we well, plan congratulations to do on that. You do, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank I appreciate you. you. Don't leave anywhere yet, Coach. Mr. Pompa. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President Hogg. Uh, Mr. Dunn, thanks for being here Appreciate today. It. As uh, I know you're excited about this program. I lobbied for this program last year. Uh, I think it's great that we're bringing it, and hopefully we'll be able to extend it even to the seventh grade later on. But tell me really, and I think you kind of touched on this, uh, and I was going to call you up here anyway, so you're coming up here one way or another, but I was, I was going to be a lot easier on you. I just want to hear from you. What does this mean to your programs, as successful as, it's, as it has been? And, and last year we got 
I don't know if hundreds of emails, but we got a lot of emails from parents and, and students telling us what a, what, what a positive impact uh, their experience in, in wrestling had been. Uh, a lot of parents talked about what a great uh, impact that it had made on their students' lives mm -hmm. in terms of discipline, dedication, uh, and, and actually even in their academics. And so, but tell us what, what, what this means to your program as successful as it already is. Uh, well, one thing I think what wrestling does, uh, the big advantage wrestling has over a lot of sports, I believe, is it's done by weight classes. And so, depending on what size you are, it, it, you can be successful at it. Uh, if you weigh 106 pounds in high school, it's hard to play a lot of sports. Uh, in our sports, you can be a state champ. Um, you know, if you're as big as 285, you can be a state champ there and anywhere in between. Um, <clears throat> for the, uh, just to give the kids more opportunity, uh, one thing I think every wrestling coach, uh, um, we talked about this when we met with uh, Mr. Ill and O.J. Camp on Monday was, we don't cut kids. Any kid that's willing to stay out and do what we ask of them, uh, and the hard work and the dedication and the discipline it takes um, from watching your weight to uh, the uh, grueling workouts that we uh, ask and actually demand of the kids, and then just to uh, make it through it. We've had a lot of success stories. Um, Miss Session Brown at Martin High School, her son came out for wrestling four years ago. You guys probably know her. She's very active uh, in the school district. And she said the impact it's made on her son is unbelievable. Uh, just the self-esteem issues that he has now and how he walks around with his head and his shirt off. And she said before he'd walk around with his head down and didn't have a lot of friends and things like that. And so I think it's a sport anyone can be successful at it because it's hard work driven uh, more than anything. And so uh, I think adding junior high wrestling is going to be uh, huge for those younger kids because I know self-esteem issues is a lot uh, in junior high. It's kind of where you're growing up and things a lot of times uh, are hard and you're kind of finding your niche and things like that. So I think it'll be, be real, very, very successful. Thank you, Coach. Uh, again, Appreciate congratulations it. on all the success you, you, you've had and, and all the high schools have had. And I hope that uh, this program, as, as beneficial as it is you know, at the junior high level, will continue to the, the feed that success that we're having at the high school level. And you're absolutely right. We heard from countless numbers of parents that same story, absolutely that same story, how beneficial it had been the discipline, uh, their self-esteem, uh, their dedication, so many different aspects of their lives. And, and we got emails from students that had graduated already from college and they were in their, in, in, in their professional lives and, and how positive, what a positive impact it had made to them. And so I know that as, as a high school athlete, you know, we talk about the money that we spend on, on athletics, but uh, frankly, the, the, the life lessons that you learn through athletics the uh, leadership opportunities that you have and that development of self-esteem is invaluable and it's a great part of making our students better because I believe that they perform academically better uh, when they feel better about themselves. They feel successful. So uh, I'm whole, wholeheartedly supportive of our athletics programs and the great job that you guys do with our students. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you guys for everything. Thank you, Coach. Mr. Hill, I've got a quick question. Um, for wrestling, I think it's a great choice because we've already sunk a lot of the cost. The biggest costs are mats, correct? correct. And That's because correct. we've already purchased those at the high school, I think it's a very cost-effective program for us to utilize. Is the biggest barrier the number of, I don't maybe fully get, is it just number of students why we don't do seventh and eighth grade coming from a junior high school? Are we going eighth right now and looking to seventh? We had that uh, very uh, <laughs> very rich discussion with the wrestling uh, coaches on Monday, and uh, if you gave the wrestling coaches their way, we'd be in they second would have grade third or to kindergarten. Grade I've, there, yes. <laughs> I've seen the little kindergartners <laughs> wrestle, and it's and they it's were very much at that uh, point. <laughs> but what we wanted to do was, you know, we want to be very cautious and, and strategic as we move forward. With, and and with moving forward with the eighth graders, we feel like we can get a good foundation. And if there are any issues that we're able to address early on, we'd rather do that with a much smaller group and then potentially look for expansion beyond this year. And, and, and Mr. Ibs, I, I see your point on the wrestling, especially as our programs. You look at Sam Houston girls, and it's unbelievable. They have 100-something girls in their wrestling program. It's, it's become the thing to do at Sam, and it's a really – great program yes. and talk about an awesome awesome program as sam um and i think add those but so for some of our junior high programs i think some of our really experienced wrestling coaches can teach some of our other wrestling coaches some of those techniques I mean, wrestling's a little bit more of a specialty you know you look at 
the good wrestlers, they've been around for a long time. But I do think at some of the other level, coaches do, our high school coaches are very talented to be able to learn other sports and for some assistance to keep those numbers down. I think that's one way to look at expansion in the future um, if we want to go to that seventh grade level. Because if we're already busting them and bringing them up, we sunk a lot of those costs. So I, I think that's something to consider. I'm fine with eighth grade this year. Um, I definitely see the eighth and seventh fitting together. Not just yet, Mr. Barron. <laughs> I was going to make the motion. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I move that uh, we approve the district's recommendation to include the uh, wrestling program. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Barron, a second by Mr. Hibbs. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Seven trustees present. Seven trustees of the affirmative. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Thank you to our wrestling program and thank you to our wrestling parents. Next, we'll move on to consent. Next, we'll move on to consent agenda. Are there any items to be withdrawn from their consent agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on. Tonight, we'll be considering the items listed on your agenda under consent items. Ms. Powell? There are actually there are no bids on the agenda. They're just purchases over fifty thousand, and uh, there's not a donations report this evening. That comes on the nights of the regular meetings, so the normal regular meetings. Thank you, Ms. So, Palin. As always, do earlier. We thank the community for their generosity. Uh, is there a motion to accept the consent agenda? Move to approve. I have a motion second. by Ms. Pena and a second by Mr. Hibbs. Any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Six trustees present. Mr. Pompa stepped out. Vote in the affirmative. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to discussion item. First item we have is Board of Trustees calendar of 2014-15 meeting calendar year. In your packet, you have the calendar for this future coming year. At this time, I would be willing to take a motion or a discussion. I'm sorry, it's not action, so we're just having a discussion. Is there any comments of the calendar? Ms. Pena. My usual concern are the effect on the calendar being set for testing and making sure that there's no trust, um, trustee meetings when we have open house. Dr. C. And we have taken that into consideration. And I'd ask my colleagues, uh, we made the switch last year. Is everyone still, uh, you know, I guess we've been doing a little over a year where we have a regular meeting and then a work session meeting. Uh, this is a time. I, I think it's been working really well. Is there any other thoughts or comments? Okay. Any further discussion? I, I think our calendar is not major change. Ms. Pena, I agree with you on those type of tweaks. We adjusted last year, I think, so that we wouldn't be hitting open house yeah <laughs> we've had that in years past where we've missed that so I I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up and reminded it anything else on this from colleagues perfect we want to post that we'll always post it and then we'll bring it back at the next meeting for action next we'll move on to community and student engagement self-evaluation dr. Vasos thank you president hogg and this evening dr. Carter will uh, make a presentation about our local accountability that uh, as a result of state law. So, Dr. Carter. Thank you, President Hogg, uh, members of the Board of Trustees, and Dr. Cavazos. To, tonight, we're gonna go over the, what the uh, process is for uh, implementing the project called Community and Student Engagement Self-Evaluation. It is something that is um, <clears throat> required under the House Bill 5 and there is a list of the requirements that, uh, for the features of this uh, particular project. First of all, the purpose, um, under legislative intent, it's to showcase accomplishments. It's supposed to be something that is, uh, uh, supplements, complements the, what's regarded as the rigorous uh, uh, state accountability vis-a-vis -vis the testing uh, area. And so it was to round it out a little bit more so that uh, districts and campuses could 
basically showcased uh, you know a broader, more comprehensive uh, view of their of their accomplishments. Um, at the same time, <clears throat> it's not just a free for all about whatever we feel like uh, showing. It, there's some preset components uh, that are required, the, and then there are criteria for evaluation in each component and established by district-wide committee of stakeholders. In this regard, we had our DIDC actually uh, establish those, um, uh, review the criteria and, and approve them. Uh, there had to be some ratings applied for all the criteria components and overall. And you'll notice these, uh, recognize these four horns uh, from the past, uh, exemplary, recognized, acceptable, and unacceptable. So we have to apply those, those uh, ratings to uh, the, the components and overall. Uh, all campuses within the same school level, they have to have the same criteria. It's not like uh, one school like Ditto saying these are our accomplishments and it has no bearing on what somebody across the town has. They all have to have the same criteria for uh, looking at uh, whatever their self-evaluation would be based on. Um, we have to establish rating standards. It must be set. Uh, must have documentation that supports the ratings. Results must be reported to the board and public hearing held by the end of August. Uh, we uh, got more recent clarification. It is actually by August 8th, and there's a later slide that actually says August 8th for you. Um, and then the report from TA must be posted uh, on the district website. That will happen in the fall. The components themselves. <clears throat> They're actually, the first eight are the ones that will constitute the, or comprise the overall. The ninth one there, uh, and I'm gonna go into more detail on this, the ninth one, the, the compliance and policy reporting stands alone, sort of as a separate. So overall, there's really gonna be two, two ratings, overall and the compliance and reporting requirements. Here are the criteria for each of the components. Under fine arts component, there are four. One of the things that we try to do is make sure that, uh, for instance, the, the district is going to have all four of these criteria. And it's going to be based on how do the campuses do. And the number of campuses that reach certain levels, well, that's how the rating of the, the district will be uh, in accordance with that. So it's finding uh, what kind of criteria will be for all junior high. What criteria would be for all high school? What criteria? So sometimes you'll see some uh, components with only two because those two apply to all levels. Uh, others, it just takes more because certain criteria apply only to high school. They can't be applied to elementary. So that's why you have different uh, numbers of criteria under each. With the fine arts, uh, it's just the, uh, for the high school and junior high, um, the fine arts programs, um, basically the offerings, the numerous performances and exhibitions. Uh, secondly, uh, for high school and junior high, percent of enrolled students taking fine arts classes. Uh, for the elementary area, the after school fine arts programs are provided. And then also the fine arts programs offer opportunities for performances and exhibitions for sixth grade. Under the wellness and uh, physical education component, there are just the two. It applies across the board. We have the anti-bullying uh, lessons, programs, educational activities. And secondly, the red ribbon or dare activities. Under the uh, community and parent involvement, again, two that apply across the board, hold events that include and encourage parent and community involvement. And of course, we have the uh, parent satisfaction survey. In fact, uh, that we just had it and we have results uh, uh, soon to, to report. The 21st century uh, workforce development uh, component has three. Uh, for all school levels, student leadership opportunities. With the junior high and elementary only, career exploration opportunities that are available. And then for high school only, the actual uh, opportunities available in uh, CTE courses. Continuing on, next component is the second language acquisition. We have four components, uh, excuse me, four criteria. Uh, the first one, ELL students who qualify, participate in an ELL program. We have secondary schools use district uh, curriculum assessments to monitor foreign language proficiency levels for Spanish and French. Uh, potential ELL students have been given an oral language proficiency test for identification, and all students utilize end-of-year LPACs to determine ELL program recommendations for the following year. 
I, I might add that this can also be something that is for the campuses, they might have just two of these um, and that's it. And it's only at the uh, district level that has all four. Digital learning environment, just the two that apply across the board, uh, all school levels. Ratio of students to computer workstations, which include the tablets, the laptops, et cetera. And then the Wi-Fi access on campus for students, faculty, and parents. That's basically the density uh, in, in the building. Continuing on with the criteria for criteria and the components, dropout prevention strategies, there are four. Install and use online program to enhance credit recovery opportunities. Core course offerings for credit recovery. Implement first phase of developmentally appropriate practices training for pre-K-2 teachers. You might wonder what does that have to do with the dropout? It's because the correlation is very tight about K-2 uh, and how that can predict later dropout and, and difficulties and at risk. So that is regarded as, as a major one for elementary. Implementation of the systems of academic, behavioral, social, and emotional interventions. Uh, the next component, the last of the eight, educational programs for gifted and talented students. Um, basically, the participation rate of GT students in AP, pre-AP, dual credit, uh, IB um, um, uh, courses and activities. So those are for junior high and high school uh, in particular. Uh, the next one, GT grouping individualized services for enrichment interventions or accelerated programs provided during the school day. That's mostly for uh, elementary. And then the next one for uh, all levels, GT grouping individualized services for enrichment interventions or accelerated programs provided outside of the school day. And then the last uh, component, again, separate from uh, the overall, uh, compliance and policy reporting, three areas look at TA prepared school report cards sent to parents. One of the areas was uh, potentially about a percent of staff meeting highly qualified standard. And the uh, last one, uh, campus plan, district plan. In this one, probably just the first and third ones would be the ones that are that would be looked at across the board. There's 100% with highly qualified, um, so it's not, it's kind of difficult to kind of parse out what's exemplary, what's recognized, what's acceptable um, for that one. Number of criteria that the campuses themselves have to evaluate. I must say, I have to say it, we tried, uh, we, we, uh, Evan Smith and myself and, and several others really tried to uh, put this all together in a way that's gonna make it as simple as possible for the principals. They, there's so much on their plate and at this time of the year, uh, we, we're just trying to keep it very simple for them. So whatever we can gather ourselves, that's what's gonna be put in there and, and we'll show a, an example of, of what they have to do. But at the high school, there are 18 areas generally. They have to just basically fill a questionnaire out for seven, seven items uh, and it should be fairly easy for them to, to do that. And I think uh, we already have one back, uh, the deadline is the 23rd. Junior high school, they have 18, of course. They uh, have to uh, give information on eight. And elementary, poor elementaries, they had the most. They had 11 that they have to uh, give us information on. The rating spreadsheet example, here's one of the examples that deal with the, uh, and, and I can't read it any, but I'm just trying to show what the, the first column is basically the criteria. In this case, it's two criteria. The second column is basically a listing of possible things that they could be looking at. These are the things that could qualify, um, and, and it's not exhaustive, but at least it, it sort of helps guide their thinking um, along those lines. And the, the third column is the actual um, ratings standards that give what, what is exemplary, what is recognized, what is acceptable, what is unacceptable. So the criteria they approved by DIDC basically uh, is right there. It's given in, the, in this one component for the, the and with this spreadsheet. This, uh, the list of examples, like I mentioned, and then the ratings criteria, and then the campuses themselves enter their ratings. Now what we have is, if it's shaded, that means we're putting in the ratings. We're gathering all the information and we're doing it. That's why you saw the part where like high school is doing seven out of 18. Uh, it's the unshaded areas that they have to uh, enter in their information. But they put that information in there and then it's um, later, late, um, after that, it's automatically calculated. 
After it is calculated there, it is automatically calculated in this area. This is the overall and all the components um, uh, together. As you see that one part that says, uh, that shows the shaded, again, that's just sort of to show that it is separate. It's not part of the overall. It is a separate part. Data collection questionnaire, this is just an example. Um, this is the elementary example. These are the questions here, the criteria, and this, they just give us the numbers um, um, in terms like the very first one, how many after-school fine arts programs were provided by your campus? And the principal just indicates what that number is, and they send the, the questionnaire back to us. And then we um, put in those shaded areas. Um, I'm sorry, uh, this is their, um, um, part of their documentation. They, mostly the school calendar is their main documentation, but this sort of co puts it uh, together in, in one compiled um, uh, document itself. And uh, so they send that to us. We, this is part of our vetting process. We have their spreadsheets. We have their questionnaires. We're confirming that, yeah, indeed, they're doing this uh, correctly um, as the second uh, level of, of verification. The timeline. The campuses, they received the school level spreadsheet and the questionnaire uh, last Monday, May 5th. Uh, they're to send the completed spreadsheet and questionnaire back to the Accountability Planning and Testing Department uh, by Friday, May 23rd. The results are reported to the board. We anticipate that to be June 3rd, Thursday, June 3rd board meeting. The data is sent to TEA. This has to be via the PEAMS submission number three in the summer and that's by Thursday, June 26th. The results are posted to the district website by August 8th, and then there must be a public hearing held to review the results by August 8th. I'm open for questions. Of course, always thank you, Dr. Carter. Ms. Sullins. Thank you, Dr. Carter. Uh, I had a few questions about your presentation um, this evening, and uh, just to kind of go in random order here, the um, one was on the um, criteria under second, second language acquisition. It mm -hmm. uh, measured Spanish and French only for... Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, on that second bullet, uh, the proficiency levels for Spanish and French, uh, do, is that just a, are the immediate things we'd be looking at in that criteria, or maybe someday expanding Th this that to is, other languages? Well, uh, these are strictly in terms of what was done this past year. Okay. Uh, I know that the, um, the uh, bilingual ESL uh, LOAT department uh, plans to extend that further. Uh, I think they did a little bit, but at least across the board with Spanish and French, that was the one okay. uh, that was done. Okay, and um, I'm gathering from looking at the questionnaire that um, these will be presented on a um, total population and not be broken down to subpops. That's correct. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. And then um, finally, the uh, the number of questionnaires per campus, uh, elementary, junior high, and high school, it, are those numbers, um, are they limited to those numbers? There's 18 criteria. If a campus wanted to do 18 questionnaires, could they do that? Or are we just saying only seven, only eight, only it's, 11? That is it. That is it. They, the, because. they, they set the, basically, yes, we could have probably had uh, a number of criteria. But in trying to keep it contained and with the timing of, we're, we're getting all this. TEA even right now, just now, is putting something else for clarification. And here we are in May. And this okay. is supposed to be all for this, this entire year, and clarification is still coming. And so there'll probably be a much more deliberate process next year, mm -hmm. and even what, what might be looked at for the whole thing. Um, having much more uh, input on the, on the part of the principals themselves uh, timing just didn't allow us to to do it um, that way this round so the major operating principle was how do we how do we comply fully comply but keep it as simple as possible so that's why we went with the thing of no more than two criteria it had to be the same you know across the board but no more than two criteria per uh, per campus okay so that so that a campus itself can choose two no, no or, can they, or like elementary, elementary had to choose, have all the, they the same. Choose, they choose them. Okay, they have all the same. Okay, because that's what I was getting. The high at. schools like will how have would we all roll the same. That up? Yeah. But okay. 
but the two okay. school levels might have different right. criteria. Okay, understandable. Across the district, we have to remain the same. Right. Yeah, understandable. Okay, right. great. Thank you. Miss mm -hmm. Pena. This student evaluation is at the at the campus level. It's not the students actually themselves. That's correct. Okay, That's but correct. the students are doing a survey as well. Yes, the student survey has nothing to do with this okay. at all. Because um, I was at Webb Elementary and they all came in with iPads, sat on the floor in the library, and they were all doing a survey because I went over to look to see what they right. were doing. That's the student. That's the uh, student survey that uh, Gibson Consulting is doing for the sixth graders. Uh, they're doing the survey uh, right now. Okay, that's why I'm going to make sure I knew which one we're talking about. Yeah. Perfect. Dr. Reich? Uh, Dr. Carter, uh, with uh, this as another uh, essentially piece of documentation that people are going to have to uh, complete, is there uh, the possibility of incorporating this into a, a campus level scorecard system that kind of ties in with everything that we're doing. Where oh, sure. It, it can be you can't, seamless yes. and not an extra uh, task for campus leadership to perform. Yes, and, and we would certainly try to go in, well, me. Um, this will certainly try to go in that direction uh, next year to make sure that all these things are very well aligned. The scorecard, yeah. The, uh, the the campus improvement plans, uh, this sort of thing, so that it's not just another thing that is you know piled on. It it, it kind of comes together. Yeah. And so, you know, when you want to showcase, there are a lot of great things that are happening. And uh, the the uh, you know I wish there wasn't the thing about it had to be the same across the board. And and maybe that might be something that will get tweaked in the next uh, legislative session. Uh, you don't know, but. Um, because there could be several, there are several great things going on in elementaries, for instance, well, high school as well, but it's not happening across the board. So if you have somebody that's exemplary in one thing and it's not happening at all someplace else, what does that mean? Unacceptable for the other? Well, we're trying to keep it where, no, let's try to keep it where, you know, everybody is going to be showcasing for everybody. So it, uh, but we hope that, that the process would come up with something that's a little bit more showcasing. Do you foresee, uh, to Ms. Sullen's question earlier on the, the sub pops, that the state will not go to that level in the future? The only one that they have so far, it, it, which, which comes close to it, is probably the GT, um, mm -hmm. because it's specifically the component is specifically to that. And of course, the area about the second language acquisition. Um, I don't think there's nothing in the intent of the of the law that would lead me to think that it's going to go in that direction. Yeah, I hope it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I, I would hope not. Okay. Well, th this is. Uh uh, just another simple thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't on my original list, no. <laughs> the, the things we have to do. Thank you very much. Appreciate yes, it. Yes, you bet. <laughs> Thank you, President Hogg. Uh, Dr. Carter, I also catch myself talking about what we're going to do in the future. <laughs> so I understand. Um, I was actually going to say a lot of what you, what you mentioned, Dr. Rice, but I think this is, uh, again, another great utilization of our data warehouse where we're going to be able to capture this information and tie it in with all the other metrics that we're measuring uh, and, you know, create that, that, that dashboard, you know, campus dashboard, district-wide dashboard. And so I'm glad that we are investing in that uh, data warehouse right. to be able to, as you said, bring it all together so it's not just another thing that you're having to uh, – keep up with because principals and APs and the staff is already tasked with enough things that they have to do right. on top of the job of actually running the school. So as, right. as little as we can add to that, that's great. And I think that, again, the, the data warehouse is going to be an excellent tool to be able to capture this information, yes. manipulate yes. it, and, and not, not only use it just to comply, but maybe actually to drive, uh, you know, performance for the district as well. Right. So thanks. Thank you, Mr. Pompa. Dr. Carr, let's talk about next steps, I think. 
Are we ready for next to discuss the next steps of what we need to do for this? Put that slide back a bit only then. Okay. <coughs> Right here. Perfect. We'll bring the results back to the board on June the 3rd. On June the 3rd. There's a big step in between here and there. <laughs> 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 Compiling all this. Uh, the 23rd we, it, we, it will be, uh, is the deadline for the campus to bring, to, to bring us all this stuff. And we're already starting with the you know, gathering. There's still even the shaded areas. Uh, we still have to compile some data uh, on that, but then putting it in there. Even the challenge, uh, right now, there's, there's one group that thinks that the uh, entering it into the PEAMS has to be all manual. Another group feels that, no, we can, we can have some kind of a programming thing to just populate teams to, to get that in order to extract all this information for the submission. I, I have faith on this side over here <laughs> saying there's going to be a program that will be able to implement mm -hmm. or be able to import that into Teams and not have it be, uh, you know, completely. Oh, he's not listening. <laughs> yeah. okay. Dr. Hart, thank you so much. It's, thank you. Uh, it's a new thing the state's decided to let us do. and. Uh, I'll hold, I'll hold judgment until we see the official <laughs> yeah. reports and year one of anything's a new year two we'll 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 make our full judgment yeah. of what we think about this okay thank you sir thank you next we'll go into discussion item c bond plan bond, bond program planning follow-up from our work session last night dr Cavazos. thank you president hogg and this is a follow-up from our work session last night and cindy has the uh, compilation of what was discussed yesterday and with the recommendations from last night so Cindy yes president hogg board members dr. Cavazos um, last evening we did have a discussion about uh, our work on planning for execution of the bond program and one of the key things we spoke about was um, the RFQ process for soliciting uh, architects and other design professionals uh, for our projects and so uh, last night as you know we talked about uh, how we would score uh, the submissions we received back from that RFQ and the board offered input on how the points are distributed on that scoring system so we have taken uh, the board's input and made the adjustments that you all requested and so what you see here is a comparison of the original point distributions that we started the discussion with last night and then the revised points and uh, essentially we took the category CM at risk experience and as Mr. Carlisle explained last night, uh, in terms of the workflow, the process uh, of, of this entire uh, construction timeline, uh, we will receive architect evaluations prior to the point at which we actually named the method of procurement for our different projects. And so uh, we think that uh, it was uh, a, a good idea to go ahead and remove all those points out of this architect evaluation so we took that uh, that category out entirely and then redistributed those 10 points. We put five of the points up under firm profile and we added five points uh, under the hub participation. We also took uh, two points out of the personnel category and put it down with hub participation so that now then we have uh, a full 10 points there. And so with that, um, we'll be happy to address any other questions you may have. Do we want to? We, we can look at the detailed worksheet too, if you. Okay. Uh, thank you for being very responsive to uh, our our discussion last night. Um, I, I I think this looks great. Uh, one thing I know that's on the detail versus this overview is it, it wouldn't necessarily be K-12 project firm experience. It's exactly, relevant. That, and that was one of the changes yeah, we made in the detailed on instructions on how to rate that. And you're right, on this particular side, it does still say K-12, but yeah. we changed it to relevant everywhere else. And uh, I guess, you know, our intent last night was quality first, period, mm -hmm. uh, assuming quality is equal 
then will this uh, 10 points in these two categories, 20% overall, be a, a sway in the direction of those firms? And we've already had discussion. The answer is yes to that. Yes. And I think it will. Yes. Yeah, I think that's great. That's, that's very good. This is uh, something that I think uh, previously was not necessarily articulated. Uh, it delineated so specifically in a, in a point scoring process, lended itself more to a, a subjective versus an objective evaluation of our uh, potential firms, our candidates. Uh, this spells it out very clearly. Uh, thank you very much uh, to you again and, and staff and to our, our uh, consultant helpers uh, and the committee uh, for the work that you guys put into it on the board here. Uh, this, I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, I don't see any any questions? Uh, I think you hit it right on the nut. nail on the head. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Reich. Any further comment from colleagues? I know we dove into this deep last night. Mr. Pompa. Thank you, President Hogg. Um, wanted to say what a breath of fresh air to have that great discussion. You guys turn it around and really reflect the, the conversation that we had. I think you guys hit it right on the spot. Uh, you brought us something that was, you know, kind of your first shot at it. You listened to the values of the board and the importance of, of keeping our, uh, our tax dollars here invested in, in our community. Uh, I think that was important. And you, you, you uh, came back and, and you brought right what we're looking for. So uh, thank you uh, to the entire staff. I know you guys worked on it a lot just between yesterday <laughs> and today. And I had several conversations with uh, a few of us up here. Uh, and so I just want to say great job and, and you got it right on. So thank you. I think we have some tweaks on the on the detail page. But I mean, the, the scoring is, is, is right where I would have uh, hoped it would be. So thank you very much. Thank you. Perfect. Ms. Powell, Dr. Grossos, I think we're good. I see consensus. Staff moves forward with this. Next, we'll go to open forum for non-agenda items. I don't have any cards for that this evening. So we'll move on to superintendent's report. Dr. Grossos. Thank you, President Hogg. And this evening, I'd like to share a few kind of information from the district. Uh, Roark Elementary, and you'll see some pictures here in a minute, has been selected as one of 219 schools nationwide for a $5,000 grant from the Laura Bush Foundation for American Libraries. Uh, librarian Michelle Quigley will use the money to expand and update and diversify their library book and magazine collection. As soon as Mark Murray gets the pictures of <laughs> Imagine that library. Ashworth Elementary students at their annual Maypole. Oh, th thank you. All right. Well, there it is. If you want to look at it, it's back there. Performance at Tarrant County College Southeast Campus two weeks ago. Students perform. Uh, dances and the weave ribbons around Maple. This partnership between TCC Southeast and Ashworth is a great display of our students' talent. There it is. Our second parent university was May the 3rd at Adams Elementary. And parents had the opportunity to learn and uh, kind of build their capacity on how to help their students and their children be successful in school. On May 5th, several of our elementary schools participated in ASD Elementary School Choir Night at the Levitt Pavilion. And you can see the picture there where the, the crowd was there. And uh, it's always entertaining to see our students in this uh, outdoor venue that the city has. So Arnington ISD night at the Rangers was, was a big success. And look at that picture right there. Our school board was recognized. And Tony Pompa threw out the first pitch. Uh, it'll never be the same. Uh, and so uh, Adams Elementary was honored at the Rangers MCA Fitness School of the Year, presented with a $5,000 check, and Martin High School uh, s choir was uh, sang the national anthem. And it was a great evening uh, of, of fun for AISD. Each year, the AWARE Foundation recognizes uh, exceptional classroom teaching. And this year, we had the AWARE Banquet that recognized and honored many AISD teachers and awarded more than $15,000 in prizes. Congratulations to the AWARE winners, and thank you the, for the AWARE Foundation for their contribution to our teachers. Last week was Teacher of the uh, Appreciation Week, and I want to take a moment to obviously thank all our teachers and principals and staff from our schools. Uh, they are vital to our success, and I know many of you uh, teachers and staff were treated to flowers, luncheons, cookouts, ice cream, and all sorts of wonderful, well-deserved uh, treats. So thank you for all your hard work. Lastly, uh, to conclude the report, uh, 
I want to mention the success of our AISD uh, 2014 bond election with nearly 70 percent vote in favor. We appreciate the voters putting faith in our district to continue to strive to be globally acknowledged as a premier school district. For more than a year, our staff and the Capital Needs Steering Committee worked diligently uh, to ensure that what we were presenting to the public was well thought out uh, and, and important for our school district. And now, as you know, the work is, is beginning. Uh, and I'd like to take a, a moment to thank our senior staff in particular for uh, their work in bond presentations throughout the community and the district. That concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Costos. Before we finish your report, I'd like to take a second um, on that, thanking the staff. I think on, all, on behalf of all my colleagues, we'd like to thank senior staff. We know how much regular jobs consist of, and then also the work on the bond, from the planning to get us to the bond, um, to education in the community for the bond. It's a critical factor. It's part of our strategic plan that we all developed as a group, um, and it was a critical factor. We know how much these last couple of months have been um, from a work level with that. Um, we have a tradition in this district and in this board. When we see outstanding work, we'd like to give a token of appreciation. We don't give much. We give 35 cent little pens, but uh, it is the gesture, I think, that makes the biggest difference. And so I would ask my colleagues at this time, if you would, please, we have pens. Um, please make sure everyone from our senior staff at this moment has one just to recognize and thank them. So let's just take just a minute and do that if possible. If the senior staff would come up to the front, Rick, come on up. <laughs> parting, parting. Yeah. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. I was, I was disappointed to hear you were going out. Oh, um, um, man. It was this week's going to miss you. There's no doubt I'll miss. I'll miss a lot. Yeah. Well, but I'm all in. We're here. I am. Y'all get one? Get two. Get one. Get two. And I think we'd be remiss to not thank you, Dr. Kvassos, for your hard work on this bond. It's, uh, <laughs> it, takes, it takes a lot of work from the superintendent, and we know how, how late your hours work during this time. So thank you so much. Next, we'll move on to school board reports. Do any of my colleagues have reports? Mr. Pompa. Thank you, President Hogg. I figured since it's my last meeting. You better I take one. A, I thought so a, also. A short report. Um, again, thank you to the citizens of Arlington for giving me an opportunity to serve you. Uh, it's been my greatest honor uh, to do so and to serve with uh, such great colleagues as, as, as I have up here. And, uh, you know, throwing out the, f the first pitch at the baseball game was a real treat. And I want to say thank you to uh, President Hogg because uh, really that was a, uh, an honor that uh, you should have had, but you had done it before and in your generosity you offered that opportunity to me. 
And as a huge baseball fan, uh, yeah, especially cool. of the Rangers, cool, isn't it? Yeah. that was a real treat to be able to do that. So I enjoyed that. Got good pictures. The kids loved being down, down there on the field with me. That was a real treat for my entire family. So thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to do that. Uh, yeah, I want to say that uh, uh, we worked really hard on this last bond, uh, all of us. Uh, Mr. Hibbs has the tan that he usually has at the end of the summer uh, now uh, from working the polls uh, so many days. Even during his lunch hour, he'd run out and serve and, and, and work a poll for an hour and a half or two. And uh, we all know now that his favorite uh, drink is iced tea. Uh, and so uh, thank you to all those that participated. Thank you for the citizens of Arlington for that resounding victory that really sends a message that we are willing and uh, ready to invest in our community. And it was one of the things that I uh, really believed when I started my service on the board that if we demonstrated an ability to uh, deliver a, a vision, uh, the ability to deliver on that vision, the community would get behind us and support us and give us the resources that we needed to accomplish. Uh, that those those very lofty goals that we set out when we when we started out with the strategic plan they're, they're bold goals uh, they're goals that most other uh, communities wouldn't take on and uh, I think that's a vote of confidence for this board that we had such a, a strong level of support for this bond and I believe that now you have the resources uh, to implement fully uh, the strategic plan and continue to take this district from a district that was satisfied in getting by uh, to a, a district that is uh, focused on performance, on high performance, on making sure that we have uh, and that our students have what they need to perform at the highest level, not just what they need to get by. And I think that's a big difference. And as, as, as one of you said, I, I do always shoot for the best and, and I think you have the resources to continue to do that. I think that uh, you are the men and women to accomplish that. Uh, and you have the staff, the administration to, to get it done. So uh, I leave tonight uh, fully knowing that you guys are going to continue to do great things for this district. Uh, and I look forward to, to watching you now from the sidelines uh, as you do great work. Thank you very much. Thank you to the citizens. Thank you, Mr. Pompa. And before anyone else has anything to say, I'm just going to say let's move on um, and end with Mr. Pompa because it was a, what a fitting end for a, a wonderful term of service with that with school with the report. So Dr. Rice, do we have any items to cover as a secretary? Nope. Seeing none at 1018, we're adjourned. <laughs>